uh, and um, make sure to keep your microphone uh, muted uh, during the event to avoid any uh, distractions. Uh, I would also like to remind everyone to um, fill in uh, the registration form that uh, we will send in the chat. Um, and uh, even if you have registered to the event before, please uh, fill in uh, the um, uh, registration in the chat. Uh, I think we are now ready to start. Uh, Irini, the, the floor is uh, yours for the formal introduction. Hello, everyone. And thank you for being uh, with us today and joining our event. Uh, I am Irini Christou. I am part of the FESTEM team on behalf of the Cyprus University of Technology. And I will host today's event. Thank you again, everyone, for being uh, with us. We send in the chat the registration form so everyone can register. So in the agenda, we had a welcoming from Professor Panayotis Zafiris, but due to an unforeseen meeting, uh, Professor Panayotis Zafiris, director of the Cyprus University of Technology, will not be able to join the event, but he would like to welcome each one of you who joined, who joined today, and especially our keynote speaker, Mrs. Andrula Vasiliou. Uh, I would like to invite our keynote speaker, Mrs. Andrula Vasiliou, former European Commissioner for Education, Culture, Multilingualism, and Youth, who will talk about the participation of women in STEM in the academia and industry. Uh, we are very proud, and it is an honor, honor having you here with us today, and we really appreciate that you made time to attend our event. Good afternoon, everyone. Everyone, uh, dear friends, first of all, let me thank you, the organizers of this event, for inviting me to address you on this very important topic. When I was a 15 year old student of the secondary school, I had, as indeed uh, all the students at the time, to make my choice as to the direction of studies I would follow for my upper secondary school education. I was a good student in general, but I had preference for science. I therefore opted to follow the so-called practical direction. But uh, when the time for the new academic year came near, my parents, realizing that only six girls enrolled for the practical studies, they changed their mind and insisted that I change my choice adopt for the classical studies. As, ex as expected me, I respected and abided by my parents' wish. At the time, there was a general belief that certain subjects and certain professions were female and others were male professions, as was indeed the case with children's games. Girls were support, supposed to play with dolls and boys with cars and trains, preparing them for their adult life in conformity with the gender stereotypes. The very few young women who opted and were allowed to study maths, physics, or chemistry at the time were destined for the teaching profession. Of course, what I said, go back a few decades. Has the situation improved since then? And if so, to what extent? How many young women are encouraged to study STEM subjects and how many do so in our times? Studies have shown that very often young girls love STEM subjects, but their interest starts to wane by the age of 15. There are a number of reasons for this change and I wish to mention a few. The lack of inspirational teachers who would encourage them to follow career paths in STEM. A European survey carried out by Microsoft found that 57% of young women said that it would make it more likely for them to follow a career path in STEM fields if they had a teacher who encouraged them to pursue such subjects. A good teacher gives life to the subject, said an 11-year-old girl. 
The lack of female role models in STEM is also another reason. Therefore, an aspirational teacher would invite an accomplished female scientist to school to speak about herself, someone young girls would relate to and ask for advice. Such an initiative would indeed be very helpful. The lack of practical, hands-on experience is another reason. Girls are afraid because of the unknown and the difficulties which they believe they would encounter. It would therefore be most useful if a partnership could be established between schools and female scientists and business women with the creation of a special website through which these women could share their workplace experience with young women in the hope that they would inspire them. Young women are afraid that they will not have equal chances of employment with young men in the fields of STEM. We should therefore give them all necessary information. The truth is that over the past decade, Europe's technology sector has grown three times faster than the overall employment. The so-called fourth industrial revolution and the new world that resulted from it needs skilled scientists, engineers, and technicians of both genders who have experience in STEM subjects. We must therefore give young women all necessary information and assure them that Europe is already facing a huge shortage in skilled information and communication technology workers, as well as in other STEM fields, and that they should not be afraid of not finding suitable employment. Lastly, I should mention the lack of encouragement that young women have from their family. Conforming to social expectations and gender stereotypes, parents fail to encourage their daughters to pursue in STEM subjects. There is still a stereotype in many parts of Europe especially in the Mediterranean region, that anything in science or technology is a job for a man. I wish to give you a very interesting example of this. A study carried out in the USA film industry demonstrates how gender stereotypes are reinforced by the way females are characterized in movies. Less than a third of all big screen speaking roles are played by females. On screen, engineers, scientists, and mathematicians are largely played by men with seven times more STEM roles in movies than female roles. It is clear that this is a situation that moves off the screen to influence everyday perceptions of gender roles. Dear friends, I wish to stress that a solid grounding in STEM subjects at school can help children to feel more comfortable with adapting to technological advances, which is key for success in the information economy. Moreover, STEM education creates a strong foundation enable children and young persons to think critically and grow in all key, key skills that will help them navigate problems far beyond the classroom. And this, of course, holds true for any gender. I would argue, therefore, that we should take all necessary steps to stop the drop-off in interest in STEM. Governments, teachers, companies and parents must all cooperate, especially schools with support of governments must modernize the school curriculum, provide access to mentors and pursue intensive training courses for their teachers. Private initiatives are also welcomed. Therefore, a recent initiative by young female scientists to establish a Cyprus chapter of women tech makers, which is a Google global scheme aimed at supporting 
and sparring, helping and mentoring women who want to pursue and excel in technology related careers is a commendable initiative. Dear friends, as I already mentioned, in the new world that has been created by the fourth industrial revolution, the jobs for the future will be driven by technology and innovation. And if the gender divide in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is not bridged soon, the overall gender gap is likely to widen. I remember that even at the peak of the economic and financial crisis in Europe, when unemployment had reached unprecedented heights, there were still almost 1 million vacancies in the ICT and the engineering fields in the EU. Let's also speak a little bit about Cyprus. We argue, and we hear this every, every now and then, that in order to help our economy, we should encourage foreign investment and foreign companies to set up business in Cyprus. But such companies are looking to build or extend their tech science design and engineering teams by hiring local talent. Unfortunately, however, they are disappointed because they find that there is a shortage of such talent, especially among the female workforce. They are therefore forced to import their workforce from other countries. And I would say what a waste that is for the Cyprus economy. The gender imbalance in STEM fields is not just bad for women, but it's bad for the economy as a whole. There are many benefits in hiring a diverse workforce. For example, hiring more female engineers means an increased ability to cater to the enormous consumer power of women in the marketplace. Moreover, corporate diversity in general is associated with improved problem solving. However, I wish to end this section of my presentation by giving you some positive news. It seems that all the efforts made in Cyprus and the, and the EU in general have produced positive results. Therefore, the figures for 2019 presented by the Eurostat report published in February this year shows that out of the 15 million scientists and engineers in the 27 member states, 41% are women. Only in four member states, the majority of scientists and engineers were women. 57% in Lithuania, 52% in Bulgaria and Latvia, and 51% in Denmark. And in four countries, the women's percentage was under, under one third. Namely, and here I think you will all be surprised, we have Germany, Luxembourg, Hungary, and Finland. I was surprised when I read that. The percentage in Cyprus is exactly the same as the EU average of 41%, which shows the progress made in the last few years. Dear friends, I also wish to speak about the gender imbalance in the research area. Female participation in teams conducting scientific research and at the upper echelons of academia is lower than the male scientists. In particular in STEM subjects, the number of women pursuing doctoral studies drops. The majority of female scientists choose to teach in secondary schools. Obviously, societal pressure directs them to focusing on building a family instead of a career. The challenge of balancing the multiple demands of a research career, which would entail paper presentation, attending conferences, writing books, research grant applications, etc., 
with family applications seem to be the major factor for their decision. Therefore, in order to maximize women's participation in research, and especially in the fields of STEM, and encourage women to work in business and academia, we have to strive to achieve a better work-life balance. If we achieve this, women, but also the economy will be the winners. And of course, the competitiveness of our economies will improve. Speaking about female researchers, however, although we still have a gender gap, it is encouraging to note that both in Cyprus, but also in the European research area, the number of female researchers is increasing faster than that of male researchers. And although I do not have separate figures for research in the STEM fields, I would hope that the increase applies in these fields as well. According to the latest statistics published in the SHE figures for 2018, which is the main source of pan-European statistics on gender balance in science, the annual average growth for research by sets between 2008 and 2015 in the EU was 3.4% for men and 3.8% for women. To achieve this increase, of course, the EU had to adopt different measures. And let, it, let me give you some examples. The Gender Net Co-Fund Program was initiated by the EU in line with the European Research Area Policy Goals. The partners were a consortium of 16 committed organizations from different countries, among which the Cyprus Research Promotion Foundation. They all joined forces in order to design and implement transnational actions on the promotion of gender equality through institutional change and the integration of sex and gender analysis into research and define and develop appropriate conditions for promoting equal opportunities in research funding. Another example is the Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions Program that I had the pleasure of having under my responsibility as a commissioner. Since its creation, it had placed a strong emphasis on promoting gender and equal opportunities for their fellows and within their projects. As an incentive to female researchers, MSCA grants permit part-time working and parental leave. Moreover, postdoctoral researchers who wish to resume their career after a break, for example, to raise children, can apply to a dedicated panel of the MSCA individual fellowships. Over a period of five years of the Horizon 2020 course, MSCA supported about 25,000 researchers, 40% of whom were women. Also, the ERC program is giving special emphasis on gender issues. Working for gender balance after ERC gender equality plans, aiming at encouraging and supporting female participation in their program. As a result, the total share of female applicants steadily grows since 2014, reaching 30% in 2017 and as high as 37% for study grants. Lastly, I wish to mention that under the new Horizon Europe program 2020-2027, having a gender equality plan will be an eligibility criteria for all public bodies, higher education institutes, and research organizations wishing to participate in the program. Dear friends, According to studies carried out by the European Institute for Gender Equality, closing gender gaps in STEM education 
would have positive impact on employment. Total employment in the EU is estimated to rise by 850,000 until 2050. But these employment rates will only, will only rise if more women study STEM subjects. Women graduating from STEM often progress into high value added positions in sectors such as information and communications or financial and business services. Higher productivity of STEM jobs is likely to result into higher wages, thus leading to a closure of the gender wage gap by 2050. In conclusion, I wish to recapitulate by saying that including women in STEM subjects and professions will enlarge the relative pool of skills, talents, and resources, will enhance the research process and research outcomes, will increase innovation potential and will boost major sectors of our economies. Thank you very much, dear friends, for your attention. Thank you so much, Mrs. Vasiliou. Very interesting presentation and all you shared with us, everything. So we will now allow some time for questions. So if anyone has a question, you can unmute your microphone and ask. Um, Irene, I have a question um, mm -hmm. for Mrs. Vasiliou. I was wondering, um, uh, since you left Brussels from your uh, important uh, post as commissioner, Mrs. Vasiliou, yes, um, yes. what changes have you observed in, in the last, uh, since then, let's say, how, how do you see things in Europe and in Cyprus since you're spending, uh, as I understand, your time in Cyprus? Uh, yes. Well, as I said, uh, now there is a more emphasis on gender equality in general, but I would say in particular in STEM, because as I said, uh, when I was a commissioner, I mentioned this figure and it's not a fictitious uh, figure, this 1 million uh, jobs uh, vacancies that we had in, um, communication in information economy and engineering, which was a real issue, led us to try and see what we could do in order to encourage, of course, more men, but also more women. Uh, it's, um, I remember a, a very interesting uh, event that we had in Brussels when I was there. Uh, together with the European Parliament, we organized an event among all students of the last form of the European schools of Brussels. And um, there were about 200 uh, last form students there. And uh, at the, uh, the purpose of this event was to encourage them in, uh, to take up these uh, STEM subjects as their studies. We had also with us a Nobel laureate in physics and he explained to them that the, how his interest started in physics was by looking at stars at night. He used to lay down on the grass and look at the stars. And this, you know, uh, let him uh, love uh, physics and uh, science in general. But then I said, at a certain point, out of curiosity, I said, how many of you study maths? And you won't believe it, out of the 200, students of the European schools, only five or six were taking maths. And when I ask why, oh, it is difficult, we can't do it. Uh, you know, there is this uh, hesitation. So we realized in the commission that we had to take some action. And all the uh, programs that I mentioned and the actions that we have taken it's towards this direction. It's how to break up the, the ice and encourage more young persons and more women, especially, to take up uh, STEM uh, subjects. But in, in uh, 
I was, you know, I, I wrote a book about the Cyprus, a, a woman of Cyprus. Uh, it is a very thorough book. And I started from the beginning of the 20th century until the, uh, our days. And uh, I asked for statistics from uh, the University of Cyprus and from Tepac. And I was pleased to hear, to see from the statistics that the women enrolling in science is quite satisfactory. The problem, as I mentioned, is that the majority of these women do not continue in doctorate, and therefore they never reach the top of the academic level, and they don't take research because of their family responsibilities. And this is a shame. And I think this balance between work and, uh, and uh, family is the secret of encouraging more women to work and to take up responsible jobs. Okay, thank you very much. So I think Panayota wants to ask something. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Mrs. Van Diu, thank you so much for your inspiring speech and sharing all this important information and about this topic we're talking. Uh, as I as, as I am also working in this uh, topic, and I hear you now talking, I also noticed the problem the demand side has because yep. we are talking about supply. It's promoting more women into that field, but there's also the demand side. Those people who evaluate those women to go higher, yes. those people that they are hiring women in tech organizations. Mm -hmm. And I think this is for me as a priority to also educate those people because they also um, they rely their evaluations and perceptions based on stereotypes. Yes. If we don't have policies promoting work-life balance, uh, encouraging women to apply, having scheme, that means that we will have a high supply of women entering those fields, but the demand will not accept those women. You are absolutely right, Padayota. Uh, and I think it is very important that we have, that we include uh, women, uh, established women who have made it in the boards of this uh, uh, board. Okay. Uh, because, um, for example, I have heard from many applicants for um, civil service, when they go uh, for their interview, if they are women, they are asked different questions. Do you have a family? Do you have a responsibility? Uh, and this and that. You know, it's not your business to ask about that. It's it's my business. No, but they 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 still ask these questions, and I think it's wrong. So they need we need to educate that you are quite right, uh, and I think applicants should demand that that the, the, the boards are mixed boards and uh, they have to include women to judge the applicants. Otherwise there is a discrimination. Thank you. I think uh, Rituka wants to say something. Mm -hmm. Hello, hi, thank you so much. Uh, it was very uh, nice uh, talk. And, uh, you know, I'm doing PhD in university in Stavanger, so it's in Norway. Huh? Uh, um, I had this question, like, uh, you know, how do you handle this issue? Like, in our workplaces, we have women, uh, and of course, they're less, and then we have men. But I think it comes down to your psychology, because women, then, women themselves think that they are less, or they are not that capable enough, or they are not that technically good, you know, because of that bias is coming from the men, the men, they are constantly just pushing you back. So they will definitely, because they have biases in their head, that they will say, no, uh, we don't believe in you. And then it's 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 how it, it has so psychological impact on women that they themselves, you know, start believing in that, that they think that they're not that good in it. So, you know, it, it all comes down to psychology. So how, mm -hmm. what can we do to, you know, change the psychology? Because it's a very, you know, like it's an inter interdependent thing. So men behaving that way will make women to feel like 
yeah um you know somewhere so they have this ingrained in their heart in their in their belief system that okay and this is what i feel with me i have struggled with it i have consulted a psychologist i have i understood that okay this was deep rooted in me and then i came and still i'm struggling some of the facts because of course in our workplaces men are not sensitive enough to understand that because women are facing so many problems especially in their work life and their personal life and they have to take so many responsibilities but it's all uh, my perception and my uh, you know my experience says it has a lot to do with your psychology how you think perceive mm -hmm. yourself and uh, how can we bring the change in how women uh, start believing in them even though there's this force coming from outside no we don't believe in you and then how can men change their thinking that and then then you know accept people and then uh, be more including and at the same time you know so it's how can we make men start uh, uh, you know believing in women and this, uh, and you know uh, so i think it has to, a lot to do with like men changing the psyche of men as well to 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 start taking women uh, you know seriously i mean like just like uh, like respecting uh, rituka yeah. do you do you um, find that even in norway there is such a psychology well uh, you, I mean, you face I, the same you face the same attitude from men in uh, in norway as well I would expect it in India or Cyprus or or, or Italy or Greece, but uh, does that happen in uh, in Norway as well? So the system, I, I mean, I don't go by the system. I mean, system supports equality of men and women, yes. but I go by the uh, individuals. Thinking individuals and, and the and you know because i interact in every day uh, i'm sorry, sorry i'm just speaking too much but it's like i interact in every day because of course we have men coming from asian countries and other mm -hmm. european countries and mm -hmm. uh, it's not like it's not a workforce which is like very liberal so the the system ensures they want to promote women but uh, it has to do with the psyche the the thinking yes. process so how can we uh, it's not just always the system has to push push you that okay don't do this do this do this you know Again, there'll be a resistance in the minds of men that okay and i think yeah i think in order to to change this psychology we have to start from very young age uh, that's why uh, i said before we need uh, the government has to take has to organize a lot of training systems uh, training seminars for the teachers because it all depends how the teachers inspire their students and how do they expire also their male students in treating women as equals it starts from the family so the family you know if um if, if as i did you know i i, I tell me um, father now i want i want to study um, mathematics and physics and oh no this is not good for you i mean you should go for literature you should go for psychology uh, social subjects so it's it's an attitude it's a stereotypes which have to change from very young age and also we as mothers and i hope one day or some of you may already be mothers but uh, when you become mothers i think you have a duty to uh, educate your children whether they are males or females that they should treat women with respect and a sense of equality you know it starts from young age you cannot change the attitude of men who are uh, 35 or uh, even um, older and they are judging women uh, applicants it's too late you have to do it from young age yeah. Thank you very much, Rituka and Mrs. Uh, uh, Vasiliu. We also have comments in the chat, some comments in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, Yasmina del Campo says that uh, this intervention was very interesting and thank you. And also Metka says that perhaps asking about your family life at recruiting is not wrong as long as the men are asked the same question. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I must tell you again a personal story, which is it goes back a long time, but it's still valid. I was the first woman to apply to become a judge. I was a lawyer and I, I wanted to become a judge. And I thought I would make a good judge because I am very um, objective in my judgments. 
And uh, the first thing that the committee asked me is whether I finish with my family. I said, no, probably not. He said, do you mean you will, you're going to have an other children? I said, yes, I only have one child. Yes, I'm going to have more children. He said, oh, no, no. This is not allowed on the bench to have women expecting on the bench. But I thought, you know, that that goes back a few centuries ago. Uh, decades, not centuries, decades. But it seems that it's still going on, not to such an obvious way, but still they ask questions which are which they ask only women and not men. You know? I think yeah. if I may add, this is now more dangerous because it's more <laughs> unconscious yes. and it's called the second generation gender bias because you are not allowed to actually reject that, but you can make your decision based on that discrimination. So that's even more dangerous because you can Maybe. control it. Maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. But the, uh, before I asked um, the, our Cypriot friends uh, whether they are disappointed about our elections yesterday, about the uh, member, members of parliament. And we are all very disappointed because the number of women has gone down. But, you know, a research which was carried out in 2016 after the previous parliamentary, parliamentary elections showed that the majority of the voters believe that politics is not for women, is for men. And it's the same mentality. Women are not fit for mathematics. Women are not good for information technology or technology in general. So this is the same male chauvinistic uh, uh, attitude, which we have to change, but that's I said, we have to change it from very young age. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I couldn't agree more, but I think that a, a challenge that, um, uh, that was highlighted um, when uh, Mrs. Vasiliou went to get a higher position is a concern that um, uh, is taking a lot of women behind nowadays. So yeah. I think it, um, I would like to hear uh, how is uh, balancing uh, a professional life in a high rank position and uh, um, being um, uh, as well uh, uh, capable in managing a personal life. Uh, what would you like to share, share? What is your wisdom to that uh, angle? First of all, um, men, we, need, we need men to go along with us. We cannot do it alone. We have to have uh, men as partners to, in this effort because men have to realize that it is to the advantage of the whole community. It's not only to the advantage of women, the whole community is going to profit. So the men have to see that if they support their wives or their daughters or uh, their sisters, they're going to profit. So it's a question of changing again the attitude of what is, what is partnership? What is family for? Uh, what um, uh, support do we have to give to each other? So uh, this is very important. The, the other thing is that we need more childcare facilities. When I, when I was in Brussels, I noticed that uh, a very big number of uh, young women who were working for the European Commission were gi uh, giving birth. I said, oh, you know, uh, they decided to increase the <laughs> the number of children in, in Europe. And then I found out that the reason why is because they wanted to take advantage of their working in the European Commission because of the childcare facilities that we provided for them. In each building where women, a lot of uh, women were working, we had child facilities from the age of six months. So as soon as the woman came to back to work uh, after giving birth, the child, this baby was taken care of. 
And during her breaks, she only had to go to another floor of the building to see the child, to feed the child, to play with the child. And then after the end of her work, late afternoon, she would collect her, the child and go home. So this made things so easy, you know. But if you have to think that two o'clock you have to collect your child or that you go home and you have to start all over again, working with the child for the homework, uh, uh, feed the child, uh, uh, give him a bath and so on and so forth, then it's too much. So women hesitate in taking up uh, jobs of responsibility. They take a job, but you see that the majority of women opt for jobs which either in civil service or in banks where their work finishes at two o'clock full stop. But even, even uh, bank, bankers, I asked a, a high position, a woman in a bank, and I said, why so many few women in the high position? They said, because they don't apply. They don't apply not because they, they feel that they are not uh, capable for that, but because too much responsibilities. They cannot cope with the responsibilities. Thank you. So do we have any other comments or questions? Okay, in the chat, I can see that people, thank you very much for, for sharing personal experiences and that it's very inspiring. Thank you, so, thank you. I will, uh, I will stay with you until I see what you are doing as a festem. <laughs> Thank you very much. So if we don't have any more questions or comments, we can now move on. Thank you very much again, Mrs. Vasiliu, for this great presentation and for your time. Thank you. And now we will move on to the brief description of the FESTEM project by Dr. Antigoni Parmaxi of the Cyprus University of Technology. So Antigoni, when you are ready, you can share your screen. Thank you, Irini. Um, just confirming that you can see my screen. Yes, we can. So um, FESTEM is uh, an Erasmus project is uh, funded uh, under the KA2 uh, strategic partnerships for higher education. And it uh, um, addresses the priorities of building inclusive higher education system, uh, the horizontal priority of social inclusion and uh, the specific priority for higher education on tackling skills gaps and mismatches in higher education. Uh, the project uh, builds a um, European partnership of, um, from six organizations from five countries. Uh, the Cyprus University of Technology is uh, the coordinator um, and the, the partnership includes uh, ARIS, um, uh, uh, GIOS uh, from Slovenia, Magenta from Spain, CESIE uh, from uh, Italy and University of uh, Macedonia from Greece. So uh, an overview of the project uh, through a short uh, video. Female empowerment in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in higher education, FESTEM. The aim of FESTEM project is to promote an innovative method and pedagogy that will allow higher education students and instructors to use traditional and computationally rich media to create meaningful, shareable exhibits that will act as mentoring models for encouraging girls and women to remain active in STEM. The project attempts to address two problems. Firstly, STEM workforce is crucial to the EU's innovative capacity and global competitiveness, yet women are vastly underrepresented in STEM jobs and among STEM degree holders. Why does this underrepresentation of women matter? Research shows that diverse teams perform better with individuals from different genders, races, and backgrounds offering different perspectives that can lead to innovative solutions. Secondly, as women are the minority in STEM, they are often reluctant to pursue their career 
in a field that lacks female mentors, colleagues, and peers, through which they can establish a support system and a sense of connectedness. The novelty of our approach is reflected in the activities that will make use of traditional and computationally rich media through which we envisage to expose higher education students to successful female role models in STEM and encourage the development of networking opportunities for women to establish a peer support system. The making of meaningful, shareable exhibits is based on the premise that by having students engage as scientists in a creative, hands-on, and passionate endeavor allows them to spark their motivation to remain active in STEM. The process adopted in FESTE is based on the learning theory of constructionism, which captures the concept of construction of knowledge by engaging in the making of concrete and public artifacts. By participating in the FESTEM project, higher education instructors will get the opportunity to advance their skills to incorporate an innovative, gender-sensitive approach in STEM education, receive a gender-sensitive teacher training guide, and promote a gender-sensitive approach in their teaching. By participating in the FESTEM project, higher education students will get the opportunity to strengthen their understanding on the challenges women encounter in STEM, receive support from a network of peers and experienced mentors in the field, and advance their knowledge of traditional and computationally rich tools. If you are a higher education instructor or student, feel free to contact us through our website at festemproject.eu. So this, is, uh, this was a brief uh, overview of the project and uh, we are moving on, on to the challenge that um, uh, STEM women encounter in EU. So whilst the uh, STEM workforce is crucial to the European uh, Union, women are still a minority in STEM and uh, they um, uh, need to uh, uh, tackle with challenges such as the pay gap, that, such as uh, being allocated an important work uh, or a lack of community or lack of uh, female, main, um, female mentors in the field. Yet, uh, research has so shown that uh, diverse uh, teams perform better and they can uh, have better uh, results and more innovative results. So our proposed uh, solution is to promote women's empowerment, equality and social coherence through an innovative approach and pedagogy that will allow higher education educators to raise awareness on gender issues and invite students to take action about gender inequality in the field of STEM. So through this uh, approach, we aim at uh, engaging our students to use uh, traditional but also computationally rich uh, media to create exhibits that will act, act as mentoring models uh, for encouraging them to remain active in STEM. So in a nutshell, we aim at uh, promote, promoting the making of uh, gender sensitive exhibits uh, that uh, will promote gender equality as a new practice for integrating and supporting higher education uh, female students uh, to remain active in STEM related professions. So uh, these uh, shareable exhibits uh, are um, objects that are made intentionally in order to sensitize and raise awareness on issues related to gender equality and women's empowerment. Uh, a, a gender sensitive, a sensitive exhibit can be either a real product in the physical world or a virtual product. We will see some examples uh, in today's uh, event. And, uh, uh, these exhibits are expected to gain visibility uh, in um, our institutions, in the partnership ex ex institutions and beyond, in order to raise awareness in uh, gender sensitive issues in STEM. So some uh, challenges that emerged from our um, research um, in uh, our project is how to address the gender pay gap or how to address the lack of mentorship for women or uh, how to reduce uh, stereotypes, stereotyping for women. So uh, we allocate those challenges to our students and allow them to uh, study them and find a possible solution and build an exhibit, an artifact, either a physical artifact or um, um, a virtual artifact that will allow them 
through this process to understand the challenges uh, that women encounter in STEM and at a second level to um, be aware of these challenges and uh, find a way to tackle them. So um, examples of gender sensitive exhibits that have been created by our, by our students here is um, uh, a poster that um, tries to uh, promote uh, the um, uh, gender pay gap challenge and to tackle the specific challenge through a poster and uh, promoting the need for equal pay, fair game for both men and women. These are some um, uh, websites uh, that have been developed uh, by students uh, showcasing um, uh, great ideas by great women in STEM, for example, and showcasing how Marie Curie managed to um, uh, become um, a, a woman in STEM and showcase her achievements. Uh, here is a virtual reality exhibition that uh, showcases uh, women in factories and uh, uh, what um, the underrepresentation of women in the specific area and uh, how uh, this can be overcome. Uh, here is an example of our university, a virtual reality um, uh, 360 uh, video uh, that has been created showcasing uh, the um, um, representation of men and women in a, in a specific school, in the School of Engineering, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, confirming uh, the um, low representation of women in uh, the field of engineering. So the um, specific objectives of the FESTEM project are to, as I said before, to develop the approach and pedagogy that uh, will promote these exhibits and encourage girls and women to remain active in STEM, develop a, the FESTEM toolbox that is a repository of traditional and computationally rich media that will allow um, higher education instructors to um, adopt this approach in their teaching, uh, together with the teaching methodology that will allow uh, the, the higher education uh, educators and students uh, to um, build a gender sensitive approach uh, as a follow up step to implement and uh, evaluate our approach and refine the framework and the tools in light of its application. Um, after the development of the FESTEM toolkit to move on to the community of FESTEM mentors and mentees, that is a community that will allow higher education students, uh, academics, professionals, and anyone with an interest in STEM to join um, a community of uh, mentors that can receive uh, advice and support and um, uh, promote this approach to um, uh, international conferences and um, uh, build also a close cooperation with the business sector so that the challenges are disseminated also to the industry. Uh, the innovation of our approach is reflected in the making of the uh, meaningful shareable exhibits uh, that uh, address uh, gender sensitive challenges, the employment of a user centered design that emphasizes the active participation of all stakeholders in our approach, and the close cooperation with the industry following a bottom up approach in order to inform both academia and industry with a gender sensitive approach. Here is uh, how our project aligns its ob objective with uh, its uh, intellectual output. All our objectives aim at uh, building the toolbox and uh, refine our work uh, for um, uh, building uh, the methodology for higher education instructors. Uh, through these uh, six phases, the objectives of the FESTEM project are expected to uh, be met, uh, starting from our understanding of the state of the art uh, in gender related issues that we will see uh, in today's event and the gender sensitive toolbox. Uh, and um, uh, building on our implementation and the feedback that we receive from the community to refine our work in order to uh, develop um, a product that will meet uh, the um, uh, needs of higher education instructors, uh, students, and professionals. 
So we aspire to advance the skills of higher education educators to incorporate innovative gender sensitive approaches in STEM education, encourage higher education students to remain active in STEM, and promote a gender sensitive teacher training educational resource in Europe. And uh, finally, to promote a gender sensitive toolkit informed from the industry. Um, we aspire to impact both, both academia and higher uh, and uh, the industry through our project. And uh, we want to foster uh, best practices, especially for encouraging women to remain active in STEM related professions. And uh, through the implementation of innovative teaching uh, tools and uh, methodologies to enhance the ICT competences of teachers and students and improve uh, the um, uh, sensitivity on gender related issues. Uh, the community of uh, FESTEM aims to raise awareness um, on gender equality and uh, support higher education students and uh, young women who have just entered uh, the field. And uh, through uh, the continuous uh, dissemination of our activities, to uh, raise awareness of the potential of our approach uh, in building a more gender sensitive um, higher education uh, system. Thank you very much. If there are any questions or comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Antigoni. Uh, we will see more uh, and in more detail in the following sections of the event. So if there are not any questions now, uh, we can move on with the introduction of the partners of the FESTEM project. Uh, I would like to ask for a representative of each organization to introduce themselves and their organization. So we can start uh, with Antigoni and the Cyprus University of Technology. Thank you, Irini. So Cyprus University of Technology is represented in this project uh, through its uh, Social Computing Research Center and the Cyprus Interaction Lab. Uh, the Social Computing uh, Research Center is a newly established multidisciplinary social computing research center at CUT, which is committed to social computing research in a broader sense, uh, creating a hub for high impact multidisciplinary research in this area aiming to address uh, the key societal challenges, uh, including um, uh, gender equality. The Cyprus Interaction Lab, it's the only research lab in Cyprus focusing in educational technology and human computer interaction and inclusive design. Uh, our research at the lab aims to understand the significant, supportive and mediating role uh, of technology in promoting learning, communication, Collaboration, collaboration and social change in varied real world contexts and settings and produce and disseminate educational technology and human computer interaction research with real world impact. Uh, our facilities include uh, a different type of um, uh, equipment uh, that deals with um, uh, accessibility, interaction design, and uh, learning design, um, uh, and our robot, for example, and eye tracking glasses for um, uh, UX. The team of uh, the Cyprus Interaction Lab in a nutshell uh, is here, uh, including academics, uh, postdoctoral researchers, uh, students uh, and uh, researchers and collaborating researchers. Moving on to Chazie. Hello, yes, thank you. Um, my name is Marina Manchenko. I'm representing Chizia, and specifically its higher education and research unit. If we can proceed with the presentation. Yes, thank you. So Chizia is European Center of Studies and Initiatives, and we were established in 2001. Uh, so this year we're celebrating 20 years in business, basically. And we are dedicated to research and innovation in uh, different areas, uh, based always on inclusive and uh, transdisciplinary approach. Um, we have six units that are operating in different uh, fields uh, based on the target. Uh, 
uh, we have 80 countries in cooperation network and uh, about 600, I think it's even more now, projects that were implemented since we are, since we're existing. I have 70, about 70 people in our staff, 150 experts with whom we're collaborating and uh, around 100 volunteers, including um, interns, etc., per year, especially in normal times when it's possible to travel and, uh, and be established in uh, Palermo for a few months. Um, we're also career guidance and uh, we work in uh, higher education uh, with, uh, with higher education lifelong learning uh, with the region of Sicily. If we can proceed. Uh, so our units, as I said, uh, we are six. The first one is the research, uh, higher education and research unit, the one that I represent. Uh, we are working with different programs, including Erasmus Plus and uh, Horizon 2020, Horizon Europe now, uh, and other various other programs all around the world. Uh, then there is Rights and Justice uh, unit, uh, promoting equality, working on gender uh, issues and uh, human rights. Adult unit uh, working with lifelong learning uh, initiatives in all different uh, aspects. And also uh, including uh, adult education, also including all the projects that are related to sports. Uh, we have migration unit that uh, works on uh, inclusive approaches for asylum seekers, refugees and migrants. Uh, school unit that works with uh, school education and with the local schools and youth unit, uh, which is enhancing active citizenship uh, and provides training, education, and mobility for young people, uh, including uh, previously it was European Voluntary Service, now it's European, Volu uh, European Solidarity Corps, uh, vet mobilities, mobilities for young professionals, etc. And um, can we, yeah, thank you. Uh, so our main action are responsible research and innovation. This is with what we are working quite a lot. Um, development of innovative learning methodologies and online tools, uh, capacity enhancement, uh, training of researchers, uh, quality assurance and evaluation of processes. Um, these are all the programs, uh, these are uh, recent like networks in, with which we're collaborating. And we are very happy to be included in this project because everything that we're doing with FESTEM clearly aligns with all of our values and all of our interests, both research and social ones. So yes, thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to be a part of this project. Thank you, Marina. Okay, greetings from Thessaloniki. The University of Macedonia is located in Thessaloniki. It is, Thessaloniki is the second city in uh, Greece, uh, in the north part of Greece. And uh, you see some pictures from uh, our university and uh, from Thessaloniki. Next slide, please. Okay, <clears throat> Smile Lab is a research and development and training lab at the University of uh, Macedonia. And uh, while the University of Macedonia has about 200 uh, Professors, uh, Smile Lab has about uh, ten uh, research uh, researchers, and uh, we are doing uh, research on uh, various issues on uh, mobile uh, learning, on uh, interactive learning, collaborative learning, uh, game-based uh, learning, also on open educational resources, uh, MOOCs, massive open online uh, courses, and etc. and and also on quality issues in education. Next slide, please. So more uh, specifically, uh, our researchers uh, works on personalized feedback, empathetic agents, web-based assessments, computerized, computerized adaptive testing, mobile-based assessment, learning analytics and recommendations, MOOCs, as I told you, for foreign language learning. So these are some of uh, the topics that uh, we are uh, working. Uh, and uh, recently we are involved in uh, seven uh, projects. Currently we are involved in uh, seven projects. Next slide, please. So these uh, are the, sp 
the projects like uh, OpenLANC uh, Network, DC4LT, FestM, that is the project that uh, organized the multiplier event today, DETEL, Pastille, Karat, uh, another one in uh, educational robot robotics, uh, more. Uh, and uh, here you see uh, our uh, researchers, uh, most of them have a PhD in uh, educational uh, related uh, issues like educational technology, uh, neuro, uh, neurosciences, etc. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that's it uh, with uh, the Smile Lab from the University of uh, Macedonia in uh, Thessaloniki, Greece. Thank you, Tasso. We can continue with that is. Thank you, Irini. So allow me to present to you what we are doing uh, at ARIS in Limassol. First of all, I would like uh, um, to express my um, appreciation and my great pleasure to be together with, with all these great partners from Festen Project, uh, trying to, to implement and make an impact, a real impact. Uh, with regards to the empowerment of uh, female in uh, STEM, uh, in the STEM field. Uh, so ARIS uh, is essentially as a startup accelerator that was founded three years ago by Deloitte and the Bank of Cyprus. Our main purpose is to offer um, both a virtual but also a physical space and essentially a structure um, where um, aspiring entrepreneurs, both uh, male and female, are given equal opportunities uh, to and support to launch successfully their business uh, ventures. So the entire program is uh, has been designed and is created by our team at the Deloitte Innovation Entrepreneurship Center. And we are very close from the uh, Cyprus University of Technology with which we have uh, close collaboration and, and support. So our program uh, is uh, has a duration of 26 weeks and it includes an intensive training uh, program by experts in different fields, both, uh, both uh, internally, but also externally from other organizations, uh, from the private uh, sector, as well as um, uh, acknowledged uh, and well-established academics and researchers that have uh, expertise in different uh, fields and domains. Um, moving on. Uh, what we offer uh, within these uh, 26 weeks, we offer uh, mentoring, hands-on advice about uh, how to, to present uh, a great uh, pitch deck uh, to attract the interest of investors or clients. Uh, we provide hands-on support with the financials and uh, funding opportunities from European, national and other funding sources. And uh, we also um, um, help with networking opportunities by developing connections and connecting with investors. So we prepare uh, the residents from day one uh, to, to be ready to, to go to the market and uh, um, to be ready to present to investors and uh, others uh, that will help them um, succeed their goals. Uh, just before I end here, I would like to mention that currently we have an open call for applications, which uh, ends next month. And of course, we want and we encourage uh, uh, um, uh, new entrepreneurs from uh, both genders, both uh, male and female. Uh, to explore this opportunity and, um, and, and see if it, this is something that is suitable for them and uh, feel free to submit an application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elisa. We can move on with Gios. Hello. Um, 
welcome everyone and uh, we are very glad to be part today of this multiplier event. Uh, my name is Sasha Ziglar Widmar, uh, and together with my colleague Sandra Katic, we uh, work on FESTAM project in Education Center GEOS, which now I will represent to you shortly. Uh, we are very proud uh, that just in this period we are celebrating our 60th universe anniversary. This is uh, some the building we are located in, in the municipality of Litia. Uh, we are founded and owned by the municipality of Litia, and we are provider of formal and non-formal educational programs for adults, as said, for 60 years now. Next slide, please. Uh, we offer different programs for adults, uh, besides elementary school, also uh, 11 secondary vocational education training programs, uh, such as logistics, preschool education, mechanical engineering, economy, and ICT. And also we offer to our students six programs in higher vocational short cycle college, uh, among them also uh, mechanical engineering and informatics. Uh, besides formal educational programs, we are very uh, active also on different non-formal education programs implemented through different courses and trainings within national and international projects. Next slide. Thank you very much. Thank we, you. Can, we can move on with Magenta. Hello, thank you very much. This is Dalia Puente. I am the head of the International Relations Department from Magenta Consultoria. Uh, we are um, a profit organization that is based in the, in the north of Spain, just by the sea, in, in a city called Gijón. If you could please give me the next slide, please. Uh, Magenta is a company specialized in social areas, um, European projects, but mainly in gender. Uh, we started in 2003 as a gender consultancy that started to evolve in what we are today, uh, which means that we work in, with people in risk of uh, exclusion, but at the same time, always with the Transverse, transversal gender base in everything that we do. Uh, what we try to do is to promote the same opportunities for everybody and to include and uh, integrate uh, all vulnerable groups. We, we don't mind if they are migrants, if they are people with few opportunities, or they are from some minorities. What we do is to do it through social programs, cooperation, education, and um, teamwork. Uh, the activities we develop are, are quite a few because uh, we have different departments, but most of them are consultancy on social areas, education, implementation of activities, and European projects. Nowadays, we are managing, uh, not managing, we are part of uh, 31 European projects, and we hope that they will be more in the next, uh, in the next uh, months. Uh, most of them are Key Action 2, Key Action 3, um, REC, but we work as well in Key Action 1 activities, but in the last year, uh, everything has been stopped for, from COVID. Thank you very much. Thank you very much as well. So are there any questions so far before we continue with uh, our output? Okay, so thank you all very much for your presentations. And we can now continue with the first presentation of the outputs of the FaceTime project.
I would like to invite Dalia Puente from Magenta Consultoria of Spain to share with us the first output results with regards to the academic and industrial per perspective of the challenges and expectations of women in STEM. Okay, I will share my, my screen with you. Thank you. Uh, Hold on a minute that I think that I am not sharing the one that I want. Uh, is this one? Yeah. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me try to, to present now here. It goes a bit slow. <laughs> Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So I will pass all of this because uh, Antigone has been before explaining about it. Uh, now I am going to, to talk about the IO1. It was led by Machenta in collaboration with the, with the whole partnership. Uh, what we wanted to do uh, with this was to map the challenges and expectations of women in STEM. Uh, the aim of this output was uh, to capture the state of the art regarding the needs, challenges and expectations of women in STEM, in higher education, and in the industry. Uh, according to the declaration of the Digital Day on, 90, on 2019, sorry for the commitment on women in digital, women are clearly unre unrepresented in the European STEM landscape. In the European Union, women count for a 52% of the population and only 15% of women throughout the European Union hold ICT related jobs. Uh, this means that the participation of women in the digital economy has been complex and multifaceted routes, being gender based and social cultural constructs, two of the most prominent. Then, after the, the after having into account the European context, what we did was to to, to look for the context in the rest of the in, in all of the countries that are in the consortium, and in order to understand these challenges, uh, what we did was to analyze uh, the practices of women in both higher education and the industry regarding the situation in Spain. As you can see, it's a scarce presence of women in government positions, even if we should be 50-50, because it's what the government says, but prominent glass ceiling in investigation careers and R&D projects. OECD reports show more than half of overall students in universities are women, but in STEAM careers, the numbers drop drastically, more of them, most of them are in humanistic uh, studies. The presence of women in government, university or public investigation position is rare. In STEM, women represent only the 20% of university professors, chairs and 25% of investigation body professionals. New plans and measures are being implemented to improve the situation of women in staying in Spain. And a difficult challenge is that the different criteria when assessing the value of women and men. Uh, the Cyprus, oh, sorry, the Cyprus uh, contest uh, says that a huge difference between STEM male graduates, which is 61.89%, and STEM female graduates, 38.11%. The percentage of women working in STEM industry is even lower to that of STEM female graduates, around the 15%. 
and only of only 4% of female members of boards, supervisory boards, or board of directors in the largest Cyprus companies. Harmful stereotypes prevail in the Cyprus society regarding the ability or lack of it of women. Of women. Sorry. Slovenian context. Uh, regarding the Slovenian context, a Slovenia committed to reform the law to ensure gender equality, improve gender balance in decision making, and enhance the, the topic of gender equality in the context of research programs and projects. But the progress is really slow nowadays. There is not much presence of male scientists or leadership positions in science. The number of female and male PhD graduates is very similar. Only 70% of PhD women pursue STEAM studies. A female researchers account to less than 40%. In 2016, it was 34.5%. Stereotypes concerning gender roles are prominent and prevent young women from from pursuing scientific and technical studies. The presence of women is balanced in some public research bodies, not in university, rectorates, institute direction, and scientific councils of institute membership. Women are often concealed from prominent gatherings such as conferences. If we go to the, to the quick context, what we, what we find is that the General Secretariat for Gender Equality Plan implements and monitors the implementation of policies on gender equality in all sectors through co-financed programs and actions. Recently, the number of women in the engineering profession has increased. They tend to earn lower salaries than their male colleagues, even if they are doing the same. 1.37% of individuals in between 20 and 29 years age are women STEM graduate versus 2.04% that are men and 0.4% of total employees are women ICT specialists versus 2.5% that are men. In 1970, the number of scientific publications by Greek women was almost equal to that of men, 0.98 relative impact index. And in, 19, uh, in, in 2019, sorry, there, there were four women members out of a total 11 members of the National Council for Research, Technology and Innovation. The main challenges for the inclusion of women in the STEM industry uh, relate to the social cultural situation, STEM misconceptions, personal circumstances, early stage career and um, career development. If we have to summarize the key points of this research, we would highly we would highlight the following. Although women have advanced their position in STEM professions, there is still much space for improvement. A lot of professional potential is being wasted mainly due to the prejudice, stereotypes, and unequal distribution of family and house responsibilities. Provision for equal opportunities of women and men is also a question of justice in a society. And integration of gender perspective in, in research topics and bigger involvement of women in research and innovation will improve quality, objective, objectivity, and relevance of knowledge, technologies, and innovation. In order to capture women everyday experiences, practices, and challenges, we decided to follow the bottom-up approach. For this purpose, each partner established a national STEAM maker with a team, which included both higher education, academics, and students. They were asked to talk about different issues, such as their experiences, the challenges they were facing, their day-to-day -day activities and life, the support they found or lack of it, the obstacles they face, and good practices they wanted to share. Sorry. 
For this purpose, participants were asked to record their experiences based on a series card prompts such as, this is my area of study, these are my role models on my field, this is the most difficult part of my week, etc. Then we made an, anal an analysis uh, reviewing the videos and captions created by our participants, identifying common challenges across participants to illuminate similarities and differences in the way they capture their everyday experiences. Uh, due to COVID restrictions, some participants uh, shared their photos and experiences during lockdown. Uh, the findings we, we had were invaluable insights from the photos, videos and captions that the participants provided and our results extended beyond that would have been possible from surveys and interviews alone, allowing participants to capture their reality in their space and time. And the types of photos that were captured were largely informed by the card prompts as was our intention. Here you are going to see some examples of, of the photos shared by our participants. As you can see, some of them and most of them are at home. Then uh, in our video findings, uh, what we could see are that is that women are motivated to follow a career at STEM that women find that mostly men are at important positions in professional activities or teaching at university. Surviving and thriving in a man's STEM world is hard, constantly facing more challenges, difficulties, or obstacles just for being a woman. Not having many women role models to look up to usually makes them feel isolated too and discourage students from developing a career in this field. Uh, then we have the high education challenges for women, uh, which are main of them socializing with others, probably because the majority of their classmates are men. Uh, they have to look pretty. I mean, this is linked to stereotypes to which women are constrained. Um, that have been mentioned several times during this report. Women, women are being undervalued. Women struggle to enter the labor market. And another very important thing is the gender gap. As a part of this output, we conducted different online surveys, um, interviews in the partner countries. The aim of these interviews and surveys was to discover the current state of the art in its partner country and to gain insight into the needs of the target groups, as well as to identify gaps, challenges, and problems. As I have previously mentioned, we conducted surveys and interviews which were directed to key, to key stakeholders, in this case, male and female teachers, academics, students, and entrepreneurs for the purpose of achieving a good sample size for the research partners were asked to conduct between five and eight interviews and between 15 to 20 online surveys. These interviews with stakeholders from both higher education and the industry could take place in a formal, formal setting. It depended of many things and factors. In total, partners conducted 41 interviews and collected 202 online surveys. Now we will move on to see the findings of this research. According to those surveyed in partner, in partner countries regarding to the situation of women in STEM, we can see two different perspectives with more or less the same amount of responses. On the one hand, 27% believe that the situation of women in STEM is poor, whereas 30% believe that it is okay, and 26% that is good. 
On the other side of the spectrum, we have two minorities who believe that the situation is either very good or not good at all. If we analyze the experience of high education students and academics with, difference, with differentiated behavior, we can see that the majority of them have suffered from this either frequently or occasionally. In total, 58% of students surveyed stated this, and 40% of instructors as well. On the other hand, only 7% of students said that they had never experienced differentiated behavior, whereas 34% uh, of academics stated that they had never experienced it at all. Regarding the th differentiated attitudes that the students have highlighted, we can mention the following. Patronizing behavior and call it an inappropriate conversations that are never addressed to other men, being allocated an important work or being the target of sexist comments and BS treatment. In the case of the academics, they highlight the, uh, they highlight the following differentiated attitudes toward women, sexist comments and BS treatment. Now we will move to see the industrial perspective of this issue. In this case, 32% of the professionals surveyed stated that have experienced differentiated behavior occasionally, whereas 20, 26%, the second most voted option, stated that they have never experienced this. Professionals highlight the following differentiated attitudes towards women, being disrespected, being target of sexist comments and jokes, BSC treatment, and not being given access, access to higher positions, the crystal ceiling, the glass ceiling again. According to the respondents, the main challenges faced by women in STEM are one, being forced to choose between family and career, mentioned it almost 150 times. Gender stereotypes mentioned almost 140 times. Um, lack of rec recognition. Respondents were asked to list things that could be done in order to empower women in STEM. We can see the answers illustrated in the following graph. And um, if you realize uh, the, the thing that was a uh, more proposed was to promote women scientists' participation in policy making processes, uh, 127. Uh, another one was a specific measures to make sure having a family or expecting to create, as it was mentioned before. Um, well, I'm not going to bother you with, with all of this that you can see here perfectly. Um, we had briefly summarized the key points from these surveys and interviews for the academic perspective. We could, we could say that STEAM students, the most prevalent opinion in, is that the current situation is poor and women are unrepresented. The students agree that this differentiation depending on gender is a direct cause of external influence and not a matter of personal will or preference. And academics says that the most prevalent options are women are somewhat underrepresented and the presence of women in STEM is visible and they are represented. The majority agrees that this trend has to change. Following this, sorry. The key points on academic um, and industrial perspective, uh, the perceived studies preferred by men are those related to STEM, which have been historically and canonically mostly restricted to the male gender by law first and by habit later on. And in the case of women, their perceived preferred studies are related to education and health science. The most mentioned reasons behind women's choice are society's influence, role models to follow, influence, family influence, innate interest and high salaries. From 
Following this research, we can propose the following recommendations for developing a gender sensitive, sensitive approach. Uh, implementing the gender perspective and feminism in the educational system, encouraging girls to study STEM degrees by giving more visibility to women, tackling the gender pay gap, tighten up the law concerning workplace harassment and gender-based violence, promoting of interest in girls by giving visibility and a platform to women in STEM, secure equal access to research grants and responsibility positions and fight the glass ceiling. To finalize this presentation, I would like to speak about the executive summary of the report and the key takeaway points of this output. The aim of the executive report is to bring together the outcomes from the self-reporting stories and the interviews. It captures the experiences, practices and challenges of women in STEM and contains recommendations on how to move forward in this issue. In the following graph, we can see the challenges and main difficulties identified for women in STEM. The main challenge is to find the balance between their personal and professional life, followed by the glass ceiling effect. We also analyzed the different initiatives and measures that were established in the different partner countries for women in STEM. And we can see that there are a lot of projects aimed at women in STEM, as well as awards or initiatives promoting their access of um, maintenance in the field. In conclusion, we can say that the challenges that women face in STEM in the academic industrial sphere are similar and sometimes overlap. We can mention the following, gender stereotypes, low flexibility in their work-life balance, gender pay gap, and lack of female role models in STEM. We can also conclude that governments are taking action with several measures to raise the awareness of the general public and to understand gender equality. There is also a lack of policies or measures to support women in later stages of life, such as maternity, and there is a lack of visibility of female researchers and scientists which hinders their progress in STEM careers, and there is also the need to ensure appropriate working conditions for both female and male researchers. We suggest the following recommendations. Implement gender perspective in the educational system, the designing school books with women role models and examples, legislate policies supporting women like maternity leave, childcare systems, etc. Promote women scientists' participation in policy making processes. And finally, we would like to call your attention to the following publication that has been made by the partnership based on this research. And that's it. Uh, everything that is, uh, is everything related to the to the IO1. I don't know if you have. Any question? I know that it's quite hard to, to listen to all of this and it's not very funny, but the results are there and is what we have. Thank you very much, Dalia. Uh, uh, this is a very interesting uh, presentation and information as well. Uh, I have shared in the chat a link that leads to the report of the work you have presented, so you can copy and paste the link in your browser if you want to see, uh, if someone wants to see the full report. So, and if we have any questions with regards to the output Dalia has presented, you can do them now. Okay, I think we don't have any questions. 
So we can now proceed with our roundtable discussion. Thank you again very much, Dalia. Welcome. Uh, we can proceed to our roundtable discussion where speakers will highlight the best practices from the academic and industrial perspective. So the purpose of the discussion is to present and discuss best practices for boosting the presence of women in STEM. There will be three questions where each panelist will have specific time to answer. So I would like to invite Elisa Lukai from ARIS program Cyprus, Medka Skovic from Mediate, Slovenia. I hope I pronounced the name well. <laughs> And also Panayota Polikarpu from the Cyprus University of Technology to join the discussion. So, hello. Hi, thank you. Hello. So, I would like to ask each panelist first to present themselves and explain the importance of the panel discussion topic within two minutes, if possible. We can start with Lisa, then we can proceed with Metka and then Panayota, if that's fine with you. And we can keep the same order for the following questions as well. So, Elisa. Thank please. you, Irini. Um, nice to be in the panel discussion as, uh, as well. Um, I have already presented uh, Iris and our activities, so I will not uh, go through again. Uh, let me just say that I have uh, um, th that I'm also the director at the Deloitte Innovation Entrepreneurship Center. And um, uh, since uh, the beginning of ARIS, our team has moved um, uh, to the space we are managing over there. Uh, so um, on a daily basis, we face the issues of, um, of startups and uh, we observe uh, the, um, the absence of uh, of female participation uh, in this sphere, even though when we started, we had our first two startups were um, consisted of women. And nowadays, uh, the numbers are dropping. And um, as Mrs. Vasiliu said, um, the, uh, things have been done and are moving to the right direction, but there is still much space for improvement. So it's, uh, I'm really look, looking forward to the um, development of this roundtable discussion to exchange uh, views with the other participants and panelists to see how we can uh, uh, improve uh, things in our countries. Uh, so from my perspective, I would also like to bring, uh, let's say, an additional element of the underrepresentation of uh, female entrepreneurs and startups and, uh, and the fact that uh, uh, female-led uh, startups have, uh, also, are also much uh, more behind than their male-led uh, peers. So this is an additional element I would like to, to introduce to the discussion. Thank you, Elisa. Metka? Uh, we cannot hear you. Are, yeah, you're hearing me now? Yeah. Okay. I think someone else has his microphone on. I think it's Mm. De... Antigonia, I don't know if you can mute the Dalia's microphone. Yes, I have yeah, just muted all... her. She's, she's... Okay. she's already okay. muted, yes. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, what can I say? Thank you for inviting us, uh, me, uh, to the panel so I can share uh, our experiences and our practices. I am Mitka uh, Project Director at Company Mediade and editor-in-chief of uh, Let's Be Engineers Initiative. Um, the main purpose of Let's Be Engineers is inspiring Slovenian youth for STEM fields and innovation. Uh, as 
we already see this today, uh, due to fast growth uh, and development of technology, we as the rest of the world uh, experienced a great shortage of engineers. Uh, and the projections in Slovenia were really not very well, since there was very, very low interest in STEM. And now for already 10 years, uh, we are um, organizing different activities among Slovenian youth to show them what engineering actually is. So to show them what engineers do and how important their contribution is to the world. So we're basically doing marketing for the engineers. Uh, our main activity are events and round tables with engineers in Slovenian grammar schools. In that way, pupils that are just about to enter the university get information about engineers and what they do firsthand. A big part of our activities represents very carefully thought communication and media coverage. Um, we have to be very creative when addressing youth so we get their attention because out there regarding content, regarding communication channels, there's a battlefield. So um, together with the good media coverage, we want our messages to reach a broader public since parents, uh, teachers, guidance counselors have a very important role in the lives of youngsters uh, and we need to inform them as well. Um, regarding today's topic, I think the world is missing out big time on the amazing contribution women in STEM can bring. And also women are missing out big time uh, on the amazing careers they can build and have in STEM fields. So I think this topic needs to be addressed over and over and over again until not just changes of the system that needs to be, of course, offer equal opportunities for all and uh, not to be gender biased, but also to make those shifts in people's mind uh, uh, to make them occur. So we don't have to talk about um, balancing private and uh, academic or um, work life anymore. Mm -hmm. That's for my introduction. Thank you very much. Panayota. Hi, thank you everyone. Um, thank you so much, the Festum team, for inviting me here today. Um, I will present myself briefly. I am a business graduate from the University of Cyprus, and uh, the last uh, almost two years I'm working on gender topping by running a campaign in Cyprus, awareness campaign for gender equality. And uh, I focused my research on women entrepreneurship, and I agree with Eliza. Uh, it's important to also focus on the other representation of women uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, the last uh, almost uh, five months, I've been working as project manager at the Cyprus University of Technology for the project of uh, named Gender Smart. Um, it's a project, the Horizon program that um, applies a gender equality plan at the university, aims at gender equality in research and uh, funding organizations. And Cyprus University of Technology is the first university in Cyprus implementing a gender equality plan that I would like to, to share more information about later. Uh, so uh, in, my, in my understanding and my belief, like uh, every crisis, so that of COVID, it reveals new needs and creates a, a sudden uh, urge of specific industries, uh, such that of STEM. Um, and the requirement is to maximize their potential. So today, uh, we are all dealing with uh, one main challenge. Less people choose career in STEM and even less reach higher uh, positions in this field, in these fields. And uh, those people uh, tend to be women. And that's why it's time for the academic and industrial world to take lead and tackle the need of having more women in STEM fields. We need to unleash women potential. And as I mentioned before, it's not only about the supply side, it's also about the demand side. So it, the industry and academia has, has its, have its role. So thank you and I look forward to, to discuss further with you. Thank you very much, Panayota. So um, the first uh, question for this round table uh, discussion has to do with women in STEM, academia and industry. And the question is, what are the needs, challenges, and experiences of women in academia and industry? 
Please describe your perspective from academia industry, highlighting the main challenges or needs. And each panelist will have approximately five minutes. Oh, Elisa, when you are ready, you can start. Okay. Um, so we have uh, since the beginning of the meeting and the um, keynote speech of uh, Mrs. Andrula Vasiliu, we have heard about how uh, women uh, face difficulties in balancing uh, uh, work with their li with life and family life. Of course, this is a phenomenon that applies to all fields, not only STEM fields, but uh, in uh, uh, the STEM uh, field, it's it's even worse. Let's say because uh, from what we have been hearing in 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 the context of the research of this project and the interviews we have been uh, conducted. We have been conducting. Um, uh, this is a, definitely a male-dominated field, and uh, um, and women, let's say, are are left uh, uh, at the side. They're not even encouraged to um, to socialize with their peers in many on many occasions. So, let's say it's even harder. At least this is what we've experienced from from the research we have been doing. Um, of course, there is a glass ceiling. It, it's we can observe it, and it's um, and it's also a bit funny because we had the parliamentary elections yesterday, <laughs> and uh, in Cyprus, and uh, I'm sure everybody who was on social media today was uh, seeing all the comments about the underrepresentation underrepresent of women in the parliament and. Um, uh, and the situation which got worse uh, this time, but um, uh, yeah, there's definitely a glass ceiling also in academia and industry in the STEM fields. And uh, we need to find uh, the best practices from all over Europe and outside Europe to implement so that uh, we can fight this. Um, uh, it has also been mentioned that there is lack of, of awareness and uh, not enough promotion of female role models. Definitely, this is also something that we have been uh, observing and uh, not only because uh, they don't exist, but because they are very focused, they have, uh, uh, they're working, let's say, in um, pharmaceutical industry, they're focused on doing their job, they're not out there um, um, uh, let's say campaigning. So this is probably why there is not uh, much uh, visibility, but it doesn't mean that the talent is not there or women uh, have not achieved, uh, have not made significant achievements. Uh, another point, uh, another major challenge is the pay gap that we observe. And this is according to studies, it's not something that uh, we say or we we feel or we suspect it is there. Um, the assignment of different tasks to women because people expect, do not expect so much from them. This is definitely a challenge that we need to overcome. And as Dahlia presented from the, um, from, from the study that was done in IO1, uh, uh, um, it, uh, they have recorded inappropriate attitudes, paternalistic or sexist, even sexist behavior. So this is also very important uh, a challenge and uh, a, a problem that we need to tackle even uh, uh, in 2021. <laughs> so uh, I mentioned a lot of things, but uh, uh, these are the main issues for us. And uh, uh, let me just say that, uh, as you know, the project is ongoing. So uh, in our role in the execution of, uh, of Intellectual Output 6, we will further investigate these issues in, uh, in dedicated uh, survey, quantitative survey and focus group discussion, which we will, dis which we will conduct in all the, um, the partner countries. So we will look into these challenges uh, deeper and uh, try to 
uh, to identify some uh, best practices uh, uh, and uh, promote them in different contexts. Thank you. So I will stop for now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Elisa, very much. So we can proceed with Mitka. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I would just like to say that afterwards, um, well, I will be presenting our project um, um, further on. That is exactly what we're tackling with the biggest project that we're having right now in Slovenia, and that is lack of role, female role models and the problem of the uh, visibility. Uh, but for now, I would like to. So I'm coming like from my point of view, and um, I would like to share a few stories of our female engineers that came to our attention. Um, and the first one's from the academia. We have female engineers. That I think they were both uh, actually also participating in your research. Aida Komisaric Rasic and Emilia Spaminova Duch. Um, and they pointed out that to advance in academia, of course, you need to meet certain conditions. Um, and one of those conditions is a mandatory three month long visit at a foreign university as a visiting professor. And you have to do that after your PhD. And you have to do it, of course, in a certain amount of time after your PhD. But this is also, also um, a time where when female are creating their family. And most of them have very small children, going from one to eight. And uh, it is very difficult for them to meet this, um, to, to fulfill this um, condition, since they are not prepared to leave their child for three months on their own. Of course, they have parents, but um, it's very difficult for them. And the, the faculties and the system not helping them um, in any way uh, to overcome this obstacle. So for Many of them who actually decide to proceed their careers, there's a lot of lot of struggle uh, to somehow organize their family life and their academic life, while others just decide to stop and their careers at the hope. And they miss it because they're not finishing that, uh, they're not meeting that criteria in a suggested time limit. Um, so I think this is definitely something we cannot say it's very for all participants in the academia. And um, um, sometimes I have, um, I cannot understand how these meet these conditions or this criteria is not reviewed once in a while, just to see if they still meet up with, uh, with temporary society. Like if you put a, I don't know, a product in the market, you're constantly checking feedback from the customer, constantly checking all the new technologies to you modify your product to be the best measure for your customer. While with this um, academic conditions and everything, we just have the rules and that's it. And now everything's changing, the rules don't. Um, and the second one I would like to share is from our one of our female engineers called Nika Mlinaric. Um, at first, because we have a selection of the female engineer of the year. Nika didn't get the purpose of our project. She, the mission or everything, she didn't understand what was all the fuss about. Uh, she grew up in an environment that was not burdened with prejudice. She had all the support she needed. And going to study physics, now being a developer engineer in aviation is completely normal to her and, entire, and her entire family. But during the selection, hearing stories from other engineers and what they were what obstacles they encountered and are still coming upon them uh, she realized she was actually privileged and now she's taking much more she's much more attentive to the world around her and takes advantage of every situation where she can offer help inspire support give praise whatever comes her way just to help women make the right choices or just ease their way so we're getting a lot of feedback from all nominees in the selection that the project has changed them. They see now inspiring women for STEM uh, in a different way. They value their work uh, and themselves in a different way. And also that being exposed, uh, letting people see what you do, what awesome job you have is actually a good thing. So no marketing, no visibility. How can young girls go into STEM if they have no clue of what that means or what that brings? Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Mirka. Very interesting. We can proceed with Panayota. Yes. Uh, so, uh, as, as was also mentioned before, uh, from early age, we learned to associate science with men. And this uh, leads to today's inequalities and to structural, structural and interpersonal challenges women face. So, from my understanding, there are two main challenges. The, the representation of uh, girls, students in STEM fields, and the, the representation we see at the top hierarchical positions. So, Regarding academia, from my experience, we see that the top hierarchical positions are more frequently occupied by men, and we we observe the we observe both vertical and horizontal segregation. Um, so, according to Cantor's uh, classic theory for of uh, proportional re representation, it suggests that women who are a numerical minority in organization, uh, it's called their top called tokens and experience additional stressors. So specifically, we see women uh, may experience greater performance, performance pressure because they are highly visible as tokens and are expected to represent women as a group. So women may also experience social isolation because they are seen as outsiders by, by the men in, in organizations. So, uh, a woman who embark uh, on careers in science or choose to study STEM fields often feel isolated uh, and that they need to constantly prove themselves and are required to fill traditional female roles in, in labs and, and offices. So from, ex from um, experience that was shared also at CAT and from research, we see that women encounter, encounter one or more pattern of gender bias at work that was also presented before, but this also includes that they have to provide more evidence of competence that men, in order to be seen as equally competent, they have to work harder. They have to, um, according to, to experience, they walk a, a tight row between being seen as too feminine, too competent or too masculine to be likable. And um, of course they face a lot of gender bias triggered by motherhood. So compared to female faculty members in social science, uh, we see that female faculty members in the natural sciences and STEM fields reported more perceived gender discrimination related to hiring, promotion, uh, salary, space, uh, equipment, access to administrative staff, uh, and graduate students, as well as more sexual harassment. So in, in some, we see female faculty members in STEM experience more negative structural, structural and interpersonal experiences than both uh, female social science faculty and male, male STEM faculty members. So these findings support the notion that such behavior are a way to penalize women for working in male dominated fields and to communicate that they are not welcome in such environments. And this leads to uh, negative outcomes as a result of the, their workplace and academic mistreatment. Mis mistreatment. It, this includes lower uh, satisfaction, job satisfaction, job per performance, productivity. And of course, if we want to look more into the female STEM, STEM undergraduate students, they also experience this um, isolation, and which is highly uh, correlated with lower psychological well-being and poorer academic performance perceptions. However, we can observe that girls often do as well as or better than boys in science and mathematics, but when um, they might be first of their class, but they remain hard to find when we look at the workforce. So there are important consequences for women's experience of mistreatment in STEM, uh, especially as uh, satisfaction has been shown to predict organizational retention. Um, that's from my understanding now focusing on, on our needs. We see that um, including men in this process is a necessary step and as, as, was, as was also mentioned before, educating organizations and academic faculty, um, but focusing on, on, men's, on men's contribution, it's really, really important. So I, I hope I'm not out of time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Panayota. Uh, very interesting. 
Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can note them down and we will uh, come back to them by the end of the discussion. So now we can proceed with question number two. Uh, with the topic is best practices, a view on the best practices. So based on the first intellectual output of FESTEM project, the one that Dalia presented, needs challenges and experiences of women in STEM, industrial and academic perspective. What best practice would you share? Each panelist will have approximately eight to 10 minutes to share their views. So Elisa, when you're ready, you can start. Yeah, so you know, Irina, I, 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 there is a bit of an echo. Uh, I was really, um, uh, thinking very hard to think of a few, uh, if not like one or two best practices that would be, you know, ideal for me because uh, there are not really um, such good practices that, or let's say magic recipe that one can get from one sphere and apply it to the other and solve the problem. I wish uh, it was so easy to do that, but it's not. So uh, I was also looking at the results of, uh, uh, of IO1 that Dalia presented and I was trying to organize uh, all these interesting findings in my mind. And um, what uh, the way I, I, I interpret them is that uh, these practices can perhaps be grouped uh, under different categories. So the first category uh, might be all the legal framework, uh, the laws, uh, national strategies and action plans that are being uh, designed and implemented uh, on a national level, uh, aiming at equal opportunities. So this is a very good starting point, but of course uh, that alone uh, cannot uh, solve the, the problem, um, but it's a cornerstone, let's say. So it's uh, it's good to start with that. Uh, then we have observed various initiatives to that promote women in STEM, and um, this is uh, these initiatives in different countries are very uh, important to increment and foster the inclusion of women in STEM fields. And they are very important for giving visibility to their work and to the career part. So these type of initiatives, I would say that are a category of their own. And then um, during our work at ARIS, um, while we are executing um, the intellectual output six, uh, we came across uh, a lot of interesting projects uh, that are being executed aimed at uh, women uh, in STEM. So uh, this again highlights the importance of EU funded projects uh, which if they are imp implemented uh, uh, correctly, let's say, and uh, they have a good, a good sustainability strategy, uh, they can live even after the end of the project life cycle and they can really have an impact. Uh, so that for me is another, let's say, group of best practices that can emerge from implemented uh, projects. Um, then we have the creation of different bodies that promote women in STEM. So for example, in Cyprus, we have the tech makers, uh, uh, women, women in tech uh, group, uh, which uh, might be, let's say at the early stage, but it definitely has all the, um, the strength to move on and to create a momentum. And um, uh, this is very important. And also the initiatives of women uh, bottom up from civil society, what Panayoda is doing with, uh, uh, with her, um, uh, what to call it, the NGO, Skyoloya. Yes, <laughs> it's a great. great campaign, yes. <laughs> 
So even that uh, bottom-up uh, initiatives from civil society are very, very important. And then we have the awards and uh, what um, Emetka has mentioned about what's going on in Slovenia is certainly helpful and very inspiring. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, we don't have a similar uh, initiative in Cyprus. So maybe it's a good practice that we might want to explore. Um, so, um, having mentioned all this, I would say again that it's a combination of various measures, measures, various best practices uh, that are inspiring, but each country needs to adapt according to the level of maturity and the level of engagement uh, of uh, women in STEM uh, professions. And um, maybe I would like to end again with the reinstating again the importance of education and uh, what has been said about um, uh, motivating uh, from an early stage girls to explore STEM studies and uh, giving them uh, uh, finding out the, the best practices that would work towards that direction. Um, but also the um, uh, raising all the public awareness and media campaigns and everything that is nece necessary to project a positive uh, public image of, of, of women. And um, I would like uh, to, to end uh, here with again mentioning the, um, the importance also of uh, uh, of women in uh, in startups and in uh, not only as team members but also as founders and co-founders, um, it's very important to strengthen uh, this aspect in our uh, innovation ecosystems. Uh, and uh, one best practice uh, that um, maybe it's it's good to mention and, and share, and I will stop here, is what the European. Um, Innovation Council is doing with the accelerator that uh, uh, they are encouraging uh, female-led startups to um, to apply and to be accepted in the accelerator, and uh, they have a quota where if they don't reach a certain number of uh, of companies uh, from women in that accelerator. Um, they continue, let's say, to 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 find uh, to recruit more until they feel they reach that number. So um, uh, this, for me, is a, is a best practice that could also be um, uh, a replicable in other uh, contexts. Um, I think I will stop here and uh, continue, uh, give the floor to the other panelists and then continue the conversation uh, later on. Yes, thank you very much, Elisa. We can now go on with Metka. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, as already mentioned, I will present our selection of the Slovenian Female Engineer of the Year. Um, as we heard so many times today, that the surveys show that one of the many reasons that women are underrepresented in STEM studying fields is because we have done quite a terrible job conveying how engineers contribute to society in a meaningful way. In other words, lack of examples and inadequate explanation of the importance of the role and contribution uh, of engineers to the development of the society. So in Slovenia, we decided not to wait for the system. Um, and we wanted to decide to do something uh, on our own. So um, as I say, the slogan of our selection is from, in, from invisibility to inspiration. In 2018, on the initiative by Metea Lonchar, she's the CEO of Simon Slovenia in Croatia, and as a part of the Led C Engineers Initiative, first Slovenian selection of the female engineer of the year was organized. Um, as the title might assume, uh, selection does not set the individual's engineering achievement at the center of the selection. Ten nominees that are selected among all the applicants are recognized for their stories, their stories and their potential uh, to uh, be an example 
and an inspiration to younger generation of girls. So the purpose of our selection is to provide the, the widest and the most effective social promotion of female engineers. As said today, I think only a quarter in Europe, one third in Slovenia. So the goal uh, of the female engineering of the year is to get to know Slovenian engineers, female engineers, uh, the interesting things they're doing, uh, how they contribute to the progress with their knowledge and their work. So it's not a competition. Uh, we're saying that all our all nominees are female engineers of the year. Just one in the end becomes a class president, let's say. She gets the title. Um, and what is also, in our opinion, uh, quite important, the jury uh, of the selection is uh, consists of four stakeholders. And one, and us, the most important stakeholders are young girls and their teachers from the Lesbian Engineer School Consortium. They're also invited and they vote for the, in their opinion, the most inspiring story. Uh, now, as I said, it is for us, the project is very important from the uh, point of view of impact in the society, in media coverage. Our first selection in Slovenia, which is basically a pilot project, uh, created a, a media wave that swept the society. Female engineers suddenly became the center of attention and acknowledgement. Um, they became very visible. Um, we're a small country, so it wasn't maybe that difficult at the beginning, uh, and it was a big thing. Uh, the wave was even bigger the second year. First solution and the female engineers made a big impact and that spread deeper into the society. Uh, they reached not only professional public and youth, but also teachers, parents, the general public. Um, the media coverage was enormous. The second year, uh, over 150 media released in a few months after the ceremony. Uh, the ceremony and the female engineer of the year were presented on the national television, radio, uh, or biggest commercial TV in Slovenia, or the national media, newspapers, local, uh, different local and professional magazines. So she, the female engineer of the year, got invited as a guest to numerous TV shows talking about gender equality, education, and of course, STEM studies. Uh, the third year, which is last year, okay, the, the ceremony was this year because we're usually organizing it in the beginning of January. Uh, due to the pandemic, was uh, the ceremony was streamed uh, through YouTube. And in the first 24 hours, I think we reached over 2000 views, which, for Slovenia, it's quite a bit. Uh, and the selection this year got over 300 media releases until May. I think we got the, the data is until May, we got 300 media releases. Uh, so we're kind of um, going 100% up each year. Um, if I take a look at the statistics, if we compare the number of applicants, first year we had 29 nine applicants, second year we have 21. And last year, third, we had 53 applicants. A great deal job for us organizers, but we were so happy since it has something to tell us about the project and its reputation in the society. And at the same time, we see this as a raising awareness of how important it is to portray uh, what female engineers do to young girls and the general public. Um, as Looking from the uh, perspective that we're aiming for, so that female uh, engineers become role models, I would share a story with you. It's like an anecdote. The first year since uh, our president of the Republic of Slovenia is the sponsor of Lesbian Engineers Initiative, of course, all the our first, the first generation of nominees were invited to the presidential palace for the audience as the president. And uh, there were a lot of young girls also invited. And at the end of the ceremony, all these young girls surrounded Dora Domanko, which is the first female engineer of, uh, of Slovenia. And they surrounded her taking selfies, taking pictures, posting all over TikTok, Instagram. So we were all like, wow, the female engineer of, engineer of Slovenia is actually fulfilling her mission. She is becoming a role model to young girls. And uh, then the second year, uh, Aida Kamishalic Lepicic, uh, female engineer of uh, 2019, got into a crossword puzzle two months after the selection uh, and into a very, very well read magazine called Ona, that means she, 
it's a weekly supplement to the biggest national daily newspaper. And not just with some little quota, with the big picture. She was the, above, the base, she was the center of that crossword puzzle. And we are look, taking a look, look at this as something, how we reach the general public, parents, teachers, uncles, aunts, uh, all the ecosystem, everyone that surrounds young girls uh, when they're making their choices about uh, in life, how to continue, uh, then where to, where to, how do I say this? In which way should they um, continue their path in career? Um, and somehow to maybe um, wrap up the presentation uh, of, uh, of our project is uh, with the work of Dora Domanko, the first female engineer in Slovenia, uh, our, uh, from our selection, is um, she said, that was her slogan actually, we want that there would be an, always enough information available for young people, boys and girls, about the benefits and tasks of STEM professions and studies, so they can decide independently and confidently whether it suits them or not. And the lesbian engineers initiative kind of adopted her words because they somehow summon up everything that we're trying to do with our activities. Thank you. Thank you, Metka. Thank you very much. Uh, Panayota. Yes, I have prepared a presentation because uh, we have, have some examples. Is it okay if I share my screen? Sure, go on. Thank you so much. So I will uh, mostly focus on uh, good practices we are implementing at CAT uh, through the Gender Smart Project, which, as I mentioned before, um, sorry, it's uh, focused on uh, achieving gender equality in research performing and research funding organizations working in particular to uh, in agriculture and life sciences research field. So um, Cyprus University of Technology is the first university that implements gender, uh, gender equality plan. And uh, as was mentioned before by uh, Mrs. Vasiliou, it's a requirement for funding by Horizon. So that means it's a priority for research and university institutions. So um, I would like to share some good practices and what we have been doing the last months at CAD. And let me start by sharing the main pillars of the gender equality plan. The first one is building a gender equality culture, developing equal career support measures, reshaping decision making and governance, and uh, include gender in funding, research, and teaching. And I would like to share some practices for each pillar. So uh, by building a gender equality um, culture, we mean that we would like to uh, promote a gender inclusive organizational culture that eliminates any unconscious gender bias uh, in all the aspects of human resources management that includes recruitment, retention, career progression, and work-life balance. So we would like to add the gender lens in those processes. So we did we do that by establishing a monitoring system for HR management activities, and I would like to share more about it uh, later. We have developed, um, along with the support of uh, the Equality Committee, committee um, a gender sensitive guidance in order to use gender sensitive language in all official documents, because Greek the, um, can be sexist, our language can be sexist. So we need to make sure that um, the language is inclusive. We would like to disseminate, of course, the knowledge that we as partners gain from Gender Smart by awareness campaign, awareness raising campaigns that I will share a few examples. And of course, we aim to develop a comprehensive annual report system that allows um, this continuous monitoring for the operation of charities. So by applying a gender equality plan in a university, it's important to keep track of the progress. So in order to keep that track of that progress, we have this permanent monitoring system for gender equality by collecting indicators, uh, which is data desegregated by gender. And the system collects data and information from, um, from the different departments by asking specific questions around recruitment, career advancement, work-life balance, and gender. 
Uh, for example, and, and a question might be like, after um, an employee uh, took maternal paternal leave, how many of those people return back to work? So specific data disaggregated by gender, so we can um, discover unconscious bias or procedures that are gender biased. So uh, another uh, successful um, uh, practice we have been doing the last five months is awareness campaign in social media, focusing on women in STEM, aiming to educate um, the, the, the academic and administrative staff and students about this topic. So we aim to bring those, uh, this topic um, to the attention of uh, people by educating them through social media. Another um, pr good practice was um, the creation of a radio show at the CAD radio, the radio station of the university, which aims to talk about stereotypes, uh, gender stereotypes, uh, discrimination in order to again uh, educate more specific uh, young people, students. And um, of course, uh, one important um, um, advice we also got from our partners is to make uh, public that the university is gender friendly. So we published to the, to the website page, uh, the official website page of the university uh, that we are implementing a gender equality plan. Um, so the communication and marketing services of PAD adopted the gender sensitive approach in its media uh, using more female models for its advertisements when presenting male dominant fields. That was something that was not uh, in the attention of the department for years until a gender equality plan came into, into application. So we uh, also uh, organized um, a campaign on uh, the 8th of March, International Women's Day, uh, where it took place to the university and 50, more than 50 people uh, were in, um, invited to choose to challenge, but they, we also applied a more personal approach on educating why gender equality matters at the university and what CAD is doing for gender equality. Uh, we aim to organize targeted events, adding the gender perspective in research and in everyday practices. So we invite academic staff to join workshops, organize to, to bring gender equality to their attention. And on the particular, it was a two-day event dedicated for gender in research. And uh, projects at CAD, such as that of STEM, were presented to the community uh, to bring to the attention of the audience that the gender dimension is also included in the research projects of the university, followed by brainstorming session with research staff on how we can make um, our university more friendly, gender friendly. And of course, the gender equality plan you can see here in Greek is, will be officially uh, uh, publi published in CAT's uh, website uh, in the form of info infographics presenting the main activities and encouraging the mobilization of the community. So whatever is taking place at a university, an organization, a big corporation, it's important to be publicly shared and to be encouraged to encourage the members to, to, to mobilize in order to implement uh, the plan. So following to the second uh, pillar of gender equality plan is the, um, to promote a gender inclusive organization culture uh, to eliminate, eliminate any unconscious gender bias uh, uh, in human resources by formulating inclusive non-discriminatory HR policy um, covering all the aspects by preparing and disseminating an annual gender report as I mentioned before and raising awareness uh, among academics. So the, the university the last few months include these gender friendly statements in the job vacancies when they announce new job positions, especially in academic positions, illustrating that uh, the university does not discriminate and adopts an equal opportunity policy at recruitment. So uh, it's important to also add uh, that gender lens to the public. So following to the third, uh, reshaping decision making and governance 
our aim is to create awareness among the decision making and governance body in order to influence and ensure gender sensitive internal processes and procedures. So uh, an important milestone here was the um, mobilization of the rector of the universe, university. The, the um, mobilization of middle and top management is really important when we talk about gender equality uh, infrastructural change. It's important to have the top management understand and adopt such um, practices in order to have them in their agenda as priority. And following um, I, I, more, some tips that we used to share is that we aim to build uh, partnerships and allies at the university. And we um, adopt a more personal approach the last months in order to gain the support of many people. So we, we literally go and knock at the door of many people asking them to, to learn about gender smart and, and encouraging them to apply with us the gender equality because we need partners, we need stakeholders uh, for um, implementing such uh, practices. So people with the same interests around gender equality were identified at the university in the different departments and services and were reached out in order to get familiar with the project and the gender equality activities in order to build collaborations and synergies. And that's how we managed to do so many things in the last five months. So moving on to the last uh, pillar, which is uh, the integration of gender in funding, research and teaching. Not only uh, it's uh, necessary for the research teams to be um, gender equally, but we see that there is um, a disproportional allocation of funding and of course, we need to include the gender dimension in the teaching. So there are different initiatives, again, under this pillar. And one which is currently applied is the gender sensitive statement, you know, calls for special scientists and research associates to encourage more women to apply. So statements such as categories women to apply uh, to submit applications as special scientists and research associates has been also adopted. As I said before, we need to ensure gender balance for formation of research team, which is also a requirement by the EU. And uh, currently we're developing um, a, um, um, a video that will be available for faculty and research um, uh, staff uh, in order to uh, learn about the importance of uh, sex and gender integration in, in research and teaching. So I would like to keep it here until here. These are the good practices we have been uh, developing the last um, months at the at CAT. So back to you. Thank you very much, Panayota. Very interesting. So as I said, we can keep the questions by the end of the roundtable discussion. So if you have any, please note them down and we will uh, discuss them at the end. So we can now proceed with the third question. Uh, based on the last question, describe how the academia and industry could join forces to prepare the students and young women to the future of higher education industry. And each panelist will have approximately three minutes for their views. So Elisa, when you're ready, you can start. Thank you. Uh, just allow me, first of all, to congratulate you guys. <laughs> I came across all this uh, work and it's really, really impressive. And uh, uh, you need to get it out so that people become aware. And um, it's definitely a good practice. And we need to also um, make sure that it goes uh, into the industry as well. And um, of course, uh, collaboration between industry and academia is very, very important. It's in fact, a, it is a key to catalyze innovation and uh, growth. And on the one hand, the industry will, um, will uh, benefit from the talent uh, that comes out of the university with all this uh, specialized knowledge and uh, uh, theoretical background and uh, training, etc. But on the other hand, the university is also um, 
uh, benefit a lot uh, from this by um, having opportunities and uh, synergies uh, that emerge from this collaboration. And what happens in, in other countries is that they are able to, um, to validate uh, technologies and uh, keep an open platform of collaboration uh, with the industry. And this is what uh, we need to do more in Cyprus. And uh, it's good that we have all the, um, the funding programs from the Research Innovation Foundation, but also other programs that allow uh, and facilitate, uh, let's say, this collaboration. And um, in terms of the um, uh, gender dimension, uh, it's of course, uh, again, very important to bring the two worlds of academia and business uh, closer. Uh, from my perspective, and uh, what I've been experiencing is that um, uh, uh, I need to stress again the, um, the importance of education and the modernization of the education system from the early stages, uh, so that uh, young girls are aware of the opportunities that the STEM world uh, offers. And um, uh, again, it is important to increase and strengthen the participation of companies from the private sector and in EU funded projects in, in consortia, not alone, just to develop a product or service, but to co develop and jointly implement. Uh, projects which include a variety of actors including academia including the non-profit sector and uh, taking into consideration the gender dimension um, this is a very a very important principle and um, if we manage to do, to do that uh, we will have more chances of uh, of being su successful and um, and these initiatives can be integrated in the real economy. Um, I think this is what I had to say. I mean, at, at Aris, we, be, we strongly believe in, uh, in these collaborations. That's why we, uh, we collaborate, collaborate with CAD as well. And uh, we already see the, um, the fruits uh, falling from the tree. So it's important to keep this uh, collaboration going. Thank you. Thank you, Elisa. Mesca, you can yes. go. Thank you. Uh, well, um, uh, with, I'm going from um, what we are um, trying to do uh, in our Lesbian Engineers Initiative is that right as we speak, we're actually preparing a project of dog shadowing in a few partnering companies. Uh, for one of our schools in the consortium. And we are putting special emphasis on girls shadowing our nominees from the selection for female engineer of the year. Um, we see, um, well, job shadowing practice engineer for a day uh, was, was first carried out uh, by a technical grammar school from Kran in Slovenia. They shadowed engineers in leading companies, Lutrich uh, Methodology, Iskratil, and Iskra Imago. Um, and it showed that job shadowing is actually represents an original, very easy to implement, highly effective introduction of young people to the engineering profession. Uh, it offered students the opportunity to spend a day in the company, follow the work of engineer for one day. That's how they experienced firsthand uh, what the working environment of the engineer uh, profession looks like, and also learned about the challenges of leadership, collaboration, um, feedback from students that were actually, I mean, from pupils, these were high schoolers, uh, was that they had no idea that engineers talk, too much, so, uh, talk so much to each other on a daily basis. So this communication, uh, the communication channel was completely odd to them um, and their impressions of students and their mentors were filled with inspiration, satisfaction, and the enthusiasm was, uh, was contagious uh, and it resonated in higher numbers of enrollments to that school next year. 
And uh, for creating, we call it a positive engineering virus. Uh, Let's Be Engineers Initiative uh, awarded them uh, the school within um, Slovene Engineerska Iskra, um, like uh, Engineering Spark for their amazing contribution to the inspiring for engineering. Um, so uh, with this uh, job shadowing that we are organizing now, we are very attentive to include as much girls and as much our nominees from the selection. And also, of course, to make then maybe a media way uh, to make some more uh, social promotion uh, in the society of the female engineers and of course their visibility. Another uh, project that we're doing right now is that our co-founder of the Vlatsky Engineers was invited to design a pilot program in the Managers Association of Slovenia in 2021, this year. And their interdis interdisciplinary graduate students were recruited on diversity and inclusion principles with special attention to female STEM students. So four out of the 10 students are coming from STEM fields. And they got the opportunity to shadow the selected civilian top managers and entrepreneurs to develop sustainable leadership competencies and learn from the best. Um, so these are kind of um, two practices that we're actually practicing at the moment. Thank you very much, Medka. Yes. Uh, Metka, let me say that uh, your ideas are really, really inspiring and are similar, similar to what I would like to suggest uh, now, because as was mentioned before, we start from a young age and uh, girls tend not to be aware of what it means to work as an engineer, what it means to be a programmer, what it means to solve challenges using technology and mathematics. So for me, pro pro promoting role models, uh, those that are current, currently working in the industry, presenting their everyday life to girls, it's really important for, for those to understand what it means to work. So my one point is that the industry can promote, I know those a few examples they have of women working in the fields, but they can promote them at schools, from young age, at universities, at least later stage, so they can understand what it means to work in such fields. I, I, I'm a huge fan of, of the phrase that I can be what I can see. It's difficult for someone to associate themselves with uh, an, an, a career, a role, without viewing role models. This is, the most important milestone for me. It's hard, to, it's hard to become interested in a subject when at school we all see male teachers uh, teaching technology and computer science. So that, that's one of my points. The other point is that the academy, the academia can teach industry the problems that women in STEM face. People like you here today who did amazing work searching about those topics. They ha you have the potential to go and talk to STEM uh, organizations, fields, tech companies about all these challenges because most of the, them, they might not be aware of those challenges at all. They are male dominated. They may, not, they may have never faced such challenges and they don't know that the minority, the few women they have at the office, they challenge managing their work-life balance, they face discrimination and gender bias in their everyday life. So the other point for me is that the academia can give back to the industry by sharing the knowledge and all this valuable research you have done. Um, so that was my two important, um, let's say, suggestions on how both can benefit by helping one another. So uh, I don't have anything else to add. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we will now allow one minute more for each panelist to share their final thoughts on the topics already discussed. So Eliza, you can go on. 
Thank you, Irene. Well, it has certainly been very enlightening to hear all these uh, examples and best practices uh, so far. So thank you very much for uh, all the input. And um, just uh, as a closing, I would uh, like to stress again the importance of uh, uh, facilitating uh, women, especially from the startup ecosystem, uh, to to become more, uh, let's say, active and uh, and uh, be uh, in a better position to raise funding in order in order to uh, to succeed and uh, bridge that gap uh, uh, between them and their um, and, and the and their um, the male peers um, i would also like to to say that um, uh, the socioeconomic impacts of uh, the pandemic of covid 19 have certainly uh, post more challenges uh, on women and uh, I would say that they have adversely affected uh, the progress which has which um, has been made in in the recent years in relation to gender equality um, uh, women had to stay at home uh, working from home taking uh, good care of, of their kids and family at the same time. And uh, this, of course, was uh, something that was evident in all the um, industries, not least STEM. Uh, but even uh, women um, working in STEM fields uh, during the pandemic, they had to go to work, they had to be there and perform their duties. So I would say that uh, uh, COVID-19 imposed even more challenges. And uh, finally, one last uh, uh, remark, um, maybe is that um, by giving women equal opportunities uh, to not only to pursue STEM careers, but thrive in them because they really can thrive in them, uh, will help narrow the gender pay gap. And uh, this is very important because it will uh, allow women to be financially secure and uh, at the same time, ensure a diverse and uh, talented STEM workforce, um, avoiding um, the biases. Um, so from my point of view, this is uh, last point is, is very important. And um, uh, just to close, I think uh, coming from the industry, it's uh, from, from the business sector, it's very important to keep these avenues of collaboration open with academia and research and, uh, and uh, continue to, um, to work together to, to make an impact. Thank you, Elisa. Mirka? Okay. Um, I'm just checking, do you hear me? Because I had to change my microphone. Yeah, my, head, my headset was about to die, so perfect timing. Um, <laughs> well, um, for the conclusion, I had two thoughts, two thoughts that actually are very frightening to me, and I wanted to share them with you. And they were all, I think, already expressed today. Uh, one is, if we take the bigger picture, as I said earlier, world is missing out on women not being in STEM, and women are missing out on not being in STEM. But they are launching uh, the, uh, the initiative of uh, female engineer of the year in Slovenia, uh, pointed out after she read uh, Klaus Schwab's uh, The Fourth Industrial Revolution about in the future, uh, with all the technology development, so with all the new trends, new business models occurring, uh, there, was all, there will also be a shift in fields of decision-making processes. And it's going to shift in the areas where women are severely underrepresented meaning women will be marginalized again. To me, um, that's scary. And there's another thought. Um, according to research done by uh, Institute, uh, Josef Stefan Institute, it's Slo the biggest Slovenian research institute. Um, if Slovenia is going uh, with the pace that we're going now, we're gonna close the gender gap in 100 years. That's a whole century. We're all gonna be dead by then. 
And for a mother of two very young girls, my girls are two and six, and I'm do doing everything I can to empower them, you know, to do everything do gender bias. We do, okay, we're doing ballet, but of course we're doing karate at the same time. So everything, so they can, I don't know, raise a smart um, uh, women that can make their own choices. So you know the, the phrasing, you can be all you can be. Oh no, wait. So I just wanted to share those thoughts with you that scare me, but I think that we all need all these projects, all the activities we can over and over again until, change, until changes actually start to happen and uh, become visible in the society and in everything that we do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I couldn't agree. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I couldn't agree with, more with the last two uh, speakers. Indeed, it's a challenging phase that we are all dealing with and pandemic help us to identify even more the inequalities we have and the difficult expectations we have for women for not for both succeeding in career and managing uh, the house and being the primary caregivers. But talking about our topic and specific uh, in STEM fields, I think we are all responsible in the positions we, we have to be ambassador of change. And gender equality is not about, it's not a woman's issue, even in such events, unfortunately we see it's the, the audience is female dominated, but it's about time to bring more men in the conversation. And this is what I always say when I talk about such topics, I, I think that uh, it, it, for, personally, I'm tired of talking about those topics and see men less and less involved, especially in STEM fields. So uh, you are responsible for gender equality, each one of us through our actions, and it's about to, to learn more about it and how we can become better ambassadors. So I hope you're all inspired by the speakers, by this amazing research and project and there's also always a way you can help uh, people to change and achieve gender equality. So have that in mind. And thank you so much for inviting us, uh, FESTEM team. And I will, I, I, I remain, I will remain at the conversation. I would like to see the full uh, conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Panayota. So it was all very interesting. Thanks everyone from the panelists. And we will now allow some time for questions for the participants to ask the panelists any questions they may have regarding the topics discussed. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, so if we don't have any questions, I think we can have our break now, uh, a screen break, a 10 minutes uh, screen break, and we can be back at, at 5, uh, 5.05 Central European time and the morning, yeah? Okay, so thank you very much and see you in 10 minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. Hope you, you all enjoyed the, the break. So uh, I hope I think we can um, continue with the presentation of the second output of the project with regards to the development of a gender sensitive uh, toolbox. Um, I would like to invite Irini to share her uh, presentation with us. Mm -hmm. Just let me know if you can see my screen. I think yes. Yes, Irini, we can see your screen. Okay, thank you. So I will present the intellectual output two of the first STEM project. That is the development of a toolbox with traditional and digital materials for, for constructing gender sensitive exhibits. So the first task of this output was a collection of existing gender sensitive material and tools. That aim, its aim was to explore the tools and materials that have been used for raising awareness in gender sensitive issues. And this happened, uh, the content was uh, developed through uh, Andesco research and also through the national stakeholder consultations in the partner countries that we will see now more uh, in detail. So with regards to the methodology of the desk research, we first searched seven online research databases with this using the same protocol with regards to gender sensitive tools and materials. We reviewed the titles and abstracts, identified and applied inclusion and exclusion criteria, and we had the final corpus of the gender sensitive manuscripts. Uh, in total, we had 24 manuscripts that uh, were included uh, in this uh, research that were categorized in traditional materials and tools and digital materials and tools. So some examples of the traditional materials tools and tools included surveys such as interviews, questionnaires and focus groups, some statistics and figures showing like percentages of women in STEM, in the STEM fields, uh, student or academic data, uh, for example, scores, demographic or administrative data, programs or courses, uh, for example, summer courses, bridging courses or, uh, or other year round activities and cultural probes. For uh, the digital materials and tools, we had uh, interactive technologies such as smartphones, laptops, Bluetooth robots, and microcontrollers, and digital prototypes and advisory tools. So after we classified the material based on its aim, so you can see from this chart that the majority aimed to raise awareness on gender equality issues. And we have also uh, other categories such as empowerment through training for girls and women, provision of educational material for inspiring students engaged in STEM, exposure to women role models, empowerment through active learning and mentoring. And this was for the desk research. So with regards to the collection of more gender sensitive materials and tools through national stakeholder consultations, uh, we made a keyword search with uh, some keywords, uh, for example, gender sensitive material, women in STEM, et cetera. And we collected 407 uh, materials from all, um, all partners together. So after we applied the inclusion and exclusion criteria, and we classified nine tools materials. And the next cycle of national consultation includes the debrief of gender sensitive materials and tools identified, as well as creative workshop activities with the STEM maker teams. So here you can see as well uh, the materials that were, um, that were included uh, in this uh, search. So the majority was multimedia, and we had also non-interactive material and websites or tangible material, non, uh, software, face-to-face -face online intervention, emerging technologies, and other organizations or associations that were found. 
Here you can see an example of non-interactive material. This is a, a poster that was uh, created by a podcast which celebrates women transforming teaching and learning through technology. And uh, you can see some role models. This is an example of emerging technologies. Uh, it's an online exhibit provided through Google Arts and Culture demonstrating 15 game-changing women of NASA. And here you can see an example of tangible material that's a placed from Lego aiming to honor four key women in NASA history. So this material was also classified uh, based on its aim, and you can see here that the majority had to do with exposure to women role models raise awareness on gender equality issues, et cetera, that you can see here on the chart. So that was for the first task of uh, the output two. So with regards to the second task, uh, it has to do with the evaluation of the material. So the aim is to identify the best possible tools and materials that can be used in the toolkit and we did this uh, through creative workshop activities with the STEM maker teams. So here you can see some photos uh, that were taken on the uh, STEM maker team workshop in Cyprus. So it was a workshop to evaluate the material for the toolkit. And some summative re results are that women's underrepresentation and underestimation in STEM does not belong in the past. It has a significant negative impact on women's life, career, choices, productivity, and effectiveness. The gender gap is exaggerated instead of being mitigated. And as a result, young female students are reluctant to follow further education in STEM subjects or follow a STEM-related career path. So when designing the toolbox, it is important to provide support for the teachers to apply gender-sensitive teaching methodology, help teachers become familiar with the technological and pedagogical resources that will be proposed by FESTEM for creating their gender-sensitive lesson plans. It is also important to provide the teachers the means to assist students in making shareable exhibits and promoting gender equality issues, and to provide support for the students in the understanding of the gender equality issues. Uh, moreover, it is important to motivate female students to remain active in STEM and engage students in the learning procedure as this enables the better understanding of the material and it helps them to remember most of it. It is also important to consider mentoring as an important motivation for women to remain active in STEM and identify and promo promote female role models as this is a strate strategy that can attain gender balance in STEM. So for the third task of uh, intellectual output two, it's uh, the material adaptation and the development of the gender sensitive toolbox. The aim is to develop a gender sensitive toolbox with tools that can be used for the development of the gender sensitive exhibits. So uh, at the beginning, a toolbox was developed and was updated based on uh, partners feedback where new activities and more step-by-step -step guidelines were added. So now we created um, a Padlet wall that I think we can share with you in the chat where you can see, I think I need to share my screen again. So I think you can see the Padlet now. So it's uh, here where we try to to include all the sections of the toolbox in a more creative way so as not to, to be able to, to go through it uh, more easily. So a first section of the toolbox of the toolbox talks about what the toolbox is for. 
that includes the framework tools that can be used for the development of gender sensitive exhibits that object are objects made intentionally in order to sensitize and raise awareness on issues related to gender equality and women's empowerment. So a glossary follows in the toolbox that are here, uh, you can see some terms that are usually used in the toolbox. So you can go through it uh, to know what each term is about before uh, starting with the toolbox. So who is, the, is this toolbox for? The toolbox refers to higher education educators to include gender sensitive activities in their course. It includes a framework and the range of activities that can be executed by a range of STEM students with a variance of difficulty and time commitment based on the teaching needs. And the toolbox is based on uh, three pedagogical uh, principles, as you can see here. Uh, to, it has to raise awareness on gender equality issues through different media, construct exhibits as means of learning, and empower through active learning. So these are, are the three pedagogical uh, principles that our toolkit is based on. Then there is a section where uh, it is described how to use the toolbox that it encompasses activities and tools listed under three steps for enabling students to construct exhibits that address a concrete gender related challenge. So these steps are step one under to understand the change, step two to construct an exhibit, and step three to share the exhibit. So in each step in the toolbox, there is first a section that explains to the educator what he, they have to do in the specific step. So what do I do in step one, understand? So in the understand uh, step, the educator typically chooses a suitable activity to introduce issues of gender to the study subject. This, for example, is a visit, an invited speaker, or even watching some videos or reading articles uh, where students have to critically reflect. And then all students uh, will randomly choose a first time challenge from the mystery box. Uh, I think we can see the mystery box here. So it's a spinning wheel where students can spin and uh, a first time challenge uh, will be allocated to, to them um, randomly. So, for example, here, I am the secretary. This is a challenge for women in STEM. And uh, some other challenges of uh, first time challenges are, for example, I do not get paid the same as men. Women get the lesser leadership positions. I am the only female student in my course, etc. So these could are challenges that could be addressed. And also uh, in each step, there are useful tools for the educators in order to um, make their activities. Uh, here you can see in the understand step, there are some quizzes made uh, in Kahoot related to STEM and FESTEM. Uh, you can click on them and play them on your own time if you like. There are some videos uh, and websites and some articles as well. So in the second step of the toolbox, that is the construct uh, step, Students will randomly choose or will be assigned an exhibit construction activity and pair this with the FESTEM challenge. So what the are gender sensitive exhibits that, that we talk all the time for the toolbox are, as we said before, are objects made intentionally in order to sensitize and raise awareness on issues related to gender inequality and women's empowerment. So these exhibits can be either uh, a poster or a virtual product, for example, uh, an application or a website or uh, a virtual tour. 
that can be made by the students to address the, uh, the challenge. And at this step, there are also some useful tools the educator can use for uh, this step of the um, toolbox. There are some video editing tools they can use, uh, some website builders, uh, graphic design tools, and prototype uh, prototyping tool tools. So we suggest some tools to the educators that they can use to execute the activities. And finally, the third step of the toolbox, that is the share uh, step, where students have to share their constructions with the public. And this could be a simple article published to an online ex exhibition. And this also depends on, on the class, the circumstances, the time, the budget, etc. All students should upload their constructions to the FESTEM community of practice interface. And uh, that is also available at all uh, stages for them to consult and reach out to other students that have gone through the toolbox in the past. So in this final step, there are also some useful tools uh, offered to the educators that they can uh, provide to their students in order to share their exhibits. And here you can see some examples of Medium, Prezi for presentations, PowerPoint. And here you can find the FESTEM uh, uh, Facebook community and the FESTEM platform that we will see later on. Uh, we also made a virtual tour to show you some examples that Andigoni showed as well in the beginning. Some example of uh, exhibits that our uh, that students made. For example, here you can see Pretty Brains for STEM. That is a website that supports young girls aged six to fourteen years years old, and they are getting inspired to pursue a career in STEM fields by providing necessary resources to the girls and to the teachers. So as we go on, we can see here Under Engine Search, that is uh, an engine enhancer for STEM professionals that helps them conduct quality research and enrich their knowledge base more, eff uh, more efficiently by providing relevant, high quality, reliable information from trusted resources all over the world. So you can go through the scenes and find various examples of uh, of exhibits made by students. There is a pink card, a site for educators where they can collaborate and promote school girls' participation in the STEM community. We can also see here, uh, I think I, I think now you can see it better. Develop here, that is a website to promote women in STEM, STEM auctions that, uh, and the only already showed that um, it's an online auction platform that they sell um, notebooks and sketches. And as we go on, we can see here a poster with regards to tackling biases. The poster for the paying gap that Andigoni also showed uh, before that here we can see the obstacles that a uh, woman find in the STEM career and how easy is the game for men? And the virtual tour with regards to the women and the representation in STEM. So it's another uh, exhibit created. Here we can see another website that is women's self-esteem that gives a motive on how women can boost their confidence in STEM. And this is uh, a video breaking the glass ceiling, video demonstrate, demonstrating successes of women in STEM and how they managed to break the glass ceiling. So these are some examples of exhibits created by students and you can see them on your own time. I think we can share the link with you. And um, uh, yeah, and also the Padlet work or wall to see the, um, the toolbox. And 
I think that's all from me. Feel free to ask any questions if you have any. And thank you very much for, for listening to me. Thank you, Rini. So um, if you have any questions, um, please be free to unmute or write your question in, uh, in the chat. I can see Panayota, uh, that's amazing tools and uh, the work of the students. Uh, thank you, Panayota. Okay, so uh, if we don't have any questions, we can continue with the last part of our event. Uh, that is the presentation of the FESTEM community platform for empowering women in STEM. So I would like to invite again Antigoni Parmaxi and George Pallaris for this presentation. And I will also share with you the platform link so you can see. Uh, thank you, Rini. Uh, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So um, uh, we will um, now see the uh, FESTEM community platform and um, uh, we wish to release the beta version today, uh, aiming to showcase a, a bit of uh, what um, uh, we, are, we have done so far and uh, receive feedback from you. So the idea behind uh, our platform is to link higher education students with mentors in the field so that, higher, uh, so that we can um, help higher education students to receive support and advice in terms of their professional development in STEM, overcome the glass ceiling effect and promote gender equality and highlight successful stories of women in STEM. The design process we have adopted is a user-centered design aspiring to contribute towards a user-friendly system that can be used uh, for receiving and providing support in STEM fields uh, with an eye to ensure maximum involvement of key, key players so that, uh, and, and at the end, uh, all our um, uh, key stakeholders to be an integral part of the development. So uh, in a nutshell, we wish to place users and their needs in the center of the design process, allowing for early identification of flaws and addressing them in timely and efficient manner. So placing uh, and capturing um, user needs uh, demands uh, different tools and um, uh, methods. You can see some of the tools that we have employed uh, in our work, um, and we will showcase some of them in our presentation today. Uh, personas, uh, scenarios, uh, conversation starters, uh, focus groups, uh, questionnaires. So uh, conversation starters are, are all about getting a reaction and sparkling uh, dialogue. The idea here is to suggest a bunch of ideas around uh, gender equality so that uh, people um, uh, that we are designing for, higher education students and instructor, can see um, at the specific pictures and see how they react. So from uh, these um, conversation starters, we have uh, found that gender issues are prevalent in STEM uh, and people are concerned about these issues. And STEM is often defined as a male dominated field. Immersion is another tool that we have used. So um, being with people to observe how they respond to events, how uh, they react to circumstances is another um, tool that allow us to interpret how um, students and academics uh, interpret uh, gender equality. 
So um, from this tool, we have uh, seen that it is beneficial for girls to have close role models um, in the household, both parents and career um, are oriented. It is beneficial to encourage girls to develop intellectual independence and pursue STEM activities on their own. And uh, working mothers do not have a lot of free time uh, to dedicate and encourage uh, their girls or their uh, children to um, more creative activities. So personas uh, are a um, uh, high, hypothetical archetype of actual users. They are not real people, um, but they represent real people during the design process. Uh, and uh, the purpose that we designed these personas is to uh, make the users more real to help um, uh, the design team to uh, keep realistic uh, ideas of how our users uh, will be using the community platform. So we have on the one hand, um, um, the fictional character of Beryl, uh, who um, has as a motto that Festem will allow me to find a way uh, in dealing with gender inequality in my professional life. And uh, Juan, who um, uh, um, uh, voices that uh, the FESTEM platform gave me the opportunity to attract more female students in my lessons. Uh, through the interviews, um, we uh, uh, saw how um, uh, higher education students and instructors uh, decode uh, or uh, construct meaning uh, with regard to gender equality issues. And uh, we have um, uh, documented their experiences with gender stereotypes. Uh, participants noted the important role of education in uh, developing an, an interest in STEM. Uh, participants also mentioned uh, initiatives to spark uh, interest like open house days in companies. Uh, they voiced also the lack of women in leading roles in STEM, that is also uh, mentioned today um, repeatedly. And um, there is a need for women to um, apply more efforts to change, change biases. Um, companies, in with regard to suggestions now, uh, there is a need for both industry and academia to collaborate for a curriculum and offer real life work internships and so that students can work in industrial projects and see those challenges in real life environments and have a mentor to be with them. Uh, there is a need for using role models uh, to inspire other women. Uh, I, I'm using what Panayota has said before, uh, I can't be where I, I haven't, what I haven't seen. So uh, you can expect from a woman to um, be in a high uh, position if the, she hasn't seen anyone in a high position, any woman in a high position. And participants also voiced particular interest and concern in communication and um, the necessity to establish a community of mentoring relationships with others and getting advice from experts and opportunities to network. So a summary of what has been voiced uh, by our participants in uh, the step where we uh, documented their needs. Moving on to uh, from these needs to uh, creating uh, the FESTEM community, the beta version of the FESTEM community, which involves uh, STEM uh, circles. Circles uh, um, uh, are groups of uh, different STEM fields that can be either private or public, where um, STEM higher education students, uh, academics and professionals can uh, get together and exchange ideas on their difficulties on the specific field and um, see how they can uh, move forward, um, collaborate and uh, seek advice on uh, difficulties that may encounter in their uh, area. So our next step is to see uh, how our key stakeholders um, react to uh, the beta version. So um, our FESTEM platform um, uh, involves uh, networking opportunities and coming together to 
uh, different uh, ideas, different circles uh, where people can join and uh, meet each other uh, and exchange uh, ideas. Uh, how the FESTEM platform uh, works, we can see a very short uh, video. So apart from um, um, upon joining uh, the FESTEM community platform, you can uh, join or build uh, your circle of uh, trust in uh, different areas of uh, STEM, of STEM uh, engineering, uh, civil engineering, for example, or create your own um, circle, either privately or publicly. Uh, link with mentors, experienced people in the field where you can um, uh, seek for support and uh, uh, receive advice uh, either in a one-to-one -one basis or in a group basis. Also, our platform features uh, successful uh, narratives and stories of uh, women who have um, um, been um, noted uh, in our uh, next door um, mentor um, uh, competition, let's say, as um, successful women in STEM, and we, would, we uh, feature their successes here in our platform because uh, from what we have received from uh, our user needs is that there is a need for uh, putting forward uh, successful women who have uh, manage to overcome the challenges and um, uh, be in the uh, upper rank of the corporate ladder. There is also uh, within the FESTEM community pl platform, the FESTEM community of practice, which is uh, dedicated to the STEM instructors for sharing material, resources, opinions, uh, interact informally on um, challenges that they might encounter and, encounter and how a gender sensitive approach can be uh, implemented in their courses. Uh, now moving on to the development process. Um, if uh, Yorgos is here. I'm here. Hi Yorgo. Hi everyone. Um... So, and when you change the slides, so I'm gonna see. Yeah, I will be uh, changing the slides here. Okay, again, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Josh Palaris. Uh, I'm research associate with FESTEM and the developer of FESTEM community platform. I would like to say uh, that I'm proud to be part of FESTEM team uh, contributing on gender equality and equity. Beginning with our platforms uh, and the features. So uh, first is the development objectives. Uh, we have a user-centered design. And the one can you change please to development objectives? Okay, great, thank you. So our first objective was to be user-centered design. We wanted to find the right balance between a design that looks modern but uh, yet simplistic uh, in order to uh, engage uh, the members. Uh, our second objective was ease of use. We wanted a platform that's going to be easy, uh, offering familiar functions that everyone who's seen uh, on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, so we wanted all the members uh, following the registration to be able to use the platform while uh, without the need of comprehensive uh, tutorials, trainings, or how-to videos. 
And the third objective was about security and privacy. Uh, our platform uh, give a control, uh, completely control over uh, their privacy choices, uh, offers end-to-end -end encryption, and finally uh, provides secure data storage. Some technical information now. Uh, the platform is hosted on Amazon Web Services, a, plow, a powerful uh, cloud platform, uh, using Lightspeed Web Server, which is, according to studies and benchmarks, is uh, 84 times faster in terms of loading speeds comparing to Apache Web Servers. Uh, for security, we use Immunify 360, which is a proactive real-time protection platform uh, for intrusion prevention and detection. And uh, in order to accomplish end-to-end -end encryption, we use SSL, which encrypts data transfer between the members and the server. Uh, some key features of the platform, we begin with the highlight of the platform, which are the circles, uh, which circles are similar to Facebook groups, uh, which are places to communicate about shared interests. Um, giving the space in order to be able to accomplish uh, one of the mission of STEM to create meaningful mentoring relationships with experts in the field. Uh, the search course allow members to post content such media, links, questions, events, uh, documents, and allow commenting. We have three types of search calls, public, private, and hidden. So it depending uh, from the admins or the mentors of the Cisco, how it's gonna be. Uh, we have network activity, which is similar to news feeds or Facebook news feeds, where users are exposed to content posted on the community platform. Uh, of course, it depends of the privacy of the post, which every member decides how to be. We have friendships uh, or connections it's the same way that Facebook and LinkedIn work. You have the wall, which is a member's profile space, which every member can customize as he wish. Uh, we have reactions, you have likes, shares, uh, commenting, and of course, the messaging. And the final point that I would like to highlight is about GDPR. The platform is fully GDPR compliant. It's hosted in Europe. Uh, it offers completely privacy control uh, to the members. We provide transparency to data collected. Uh, everything is noted at our privacy policy. And of course, we give the right to erasure uh, for every member in order to able to delete easily their account. Uh, I don't know, uh, Andiwoni, do you want to present the... Yes, um, we can share uh, on the um, Facebook, on the chat, the... The URL that I would like to know, it's festem.network. Um, this is our latest beta version, which is fully uh, operatable. Uh, this is our front page. Uh, from the navigation, you have some information for the project. Uh, how, do, how does it work? Which is then documentation, which is uh, going to update it uh, frequently. How to use, how to register. Uh, how circles work, how to pause, etc. And then is the circles, of course. Uh, currently, we have eight circles. Uh, all circles are currently public, except uh, first and community of practice, which is private. And okay, um, circles and below circles, we have. Uh, network, yes, network, network activity and members. Network activity, as I told, is like uh, similar to news feeds. The registration process is very simple. 
by clicking on registration button uh, top uh, right, we fill the form, username, password, some details. There is also a member type where we, at the moment we have two types, it's instructors and others. Um, following new updates, we will gonna expand the options and this will be will allow new uh, members to auto join some circles depending their uh, the fields they choose following a key point you have to say that following the registration uh, to process and validate your account you have to check your email account and click on the URL in order to activate. In case your e the email doesn't appear in your inbox, uh, please check your junk or spam uh, because sometimes the spam filters uh, move the email, the activation email to spam. So we will greatly appreciate if you could, if you um, could join uh, the platform, um, join uh, circles that you are interested in, uh, or create new circles. And um, uh, if you have any uh, questions, we will be happy to address it. As I said, uh, as we said earlier, this is uh, the beta version, so uh, updates are still. Uh, in, in process, uh, but uh, we would like to receive feedback from, from you, from people who are uh, intended to uh, use the platform and uh, any comments or questions or any flaws that you identify to be um, noted early so that we uh, maximize our, um, um, the productivity of the platform eventually. Thank you very much, Yerwin and Dioni. Uh, let's see if we have any questions from the participants. I have already shared the platform link and the link for feedback for anyone who joins and would like to uh, provide us the feedback. So yeah, if we have uh, any questions, feel free to ask now. And I don't know if I can share also inside the circle to demonstrate how- Yes, how well, please do, yes. Uh, okay. So, so following the registration, we activate our account by clicking on the link uh, at, your, at the email. And let's go inside the, the circle. I'm going to engineering. The functionalities are very similar uh, to Facebook and LinkedIn. So members of the, of the circle uh, can share text, comments, or a question, share photo, slideshow, quotes, animations, uh, files, video, audio, and links. Uh, we have the reactions. Uh, we can set our feelings, the same like Facebook. We can tag other members. Uh, we can react to a post, like, comment, um, share. Every circle uh, has the same functionalities and same options like have the media, we have forum, dedicated forum for every circle. Uh, we have the body drive, which is similar to Google Drive and OneDrive where the members of every circle can share uh, files, data. We have the docs where the members um, can contribute to 
to a paper or to an abstract or to anything that concerns the, the subject of the circle. We have events, we have the members, uh, we can invite other members to the circle. So, uh, the media, have the forum. where we can post topic and make discussion questions. Body Drive, which is similar to Google Drive and OneDrive, sharing the files. The docs, where every member can contribute. The events of the circle, the members, Okay, um, every member has his own notifications, uh, friend requests, new posts to a circle, etc. Uh, messaging and the wall of every member, which can be configured as every member wish. And if you want to show me, to show you the uh, settings of the privacy, the privacy settings. Okay, it's under account dashboard. And you said if you want your account to be private or not. At the same time, during registration, you set the fields uh, how to do, how to act in terms of. I'm going to show you now. During registration, again, every member can change the privacy of every field, personal, like date of birth. You can change the, you can control the privacy by clicking on the change and set who uh, can access this information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yoro. Are there any questions? I think Maria asked about body drive and uh, George uh, explained its its use. Mm -hmm. As I said, but body drive is similar to Google or OneDrive. Mm -hmm. hey, it looks really nice. <laughs> That's very good work. Congratulations, really. The only thing that I couldn't find uh fast let's say it is my profile so i found it when i went to circles and i um i i chose members so only this took me some time but uh more or less everything is uh, really nice i was um searching to hello maria <laughs> to this one that uh you know, when I, you have this uh, option on the, um, on the right corner up when you see your name. So I was searching there to find my profile. But there you can find all the other things that you said, like messages, friend requests, circle line, invites, forms. But um, yes, only this. But it's really nice. So good work. Excellent. Okay, you, you can access easily your profile by clicking on your photo or in the rounded photo on the upper right. If you click on it, it, it redirects you to your profile. Or if you click on your name, it again redirects you to your profile page. Okay, very nice. And if I want to change uh, and add my 
picture, can I or not? So, or it doesn't give this option, uh, I you think. You can, of course, you, you visit. Oh, profile settings, probably. Change avatar. Yes, okay, I found it. And you change provide avatar, yes, correct. Okay. Okay. Nice, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else? Okay, thank you again, Yorgo and Antigoni. Uh, I think we can continue with the summary and closing remarks, Antigoni, in order yes. to close our event. Can you see my screen, Irini? Yes. Okay, so um, to sum up, uh, today's event uh, was dedicated to uh, FESTEM, uh, a KA2 Erasmus Plus project um, under uh, the umbrella of strategic partnerships for higher education, uh, tackling uh, the priorities, um, specific priorities for higher education, building inclusive higher education systems and tackling skill, skills gaps and mismatches in higher education and the high horizontal priority dedicated to social inclusion. Uh, the partnership involves uh, six organizations from five countries. And today, today we have shared with you the challenge behind the FESTEM project that is um, the low representation of women in STEM and the various challenges that women encounter in the specific area, pay gap, um, the lack of community, the um, uh, allocation of an important task to women and the lack of female mentors. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, FESTEM aims at uh, promoting the making of uh, gender sensitive uh, exhibits for promoting gender equality, uh, a new pra practice that promises to integrate and support higher education female students to remain active in STEM related professions. A summary of the challenges from our first output relate to gender stereotypes, low flexibility uh, for women in their uh, work-life balance, uh, the gender pay gap and the lack of female role, of, uh, role models in STEM. And there is a need for um, action um, and measures to take place uh, in order to uh, tackle the gender inequality uh, what we have um, documented is uh, the lack of policies uh, in um, a later stages of life, for example, during maternity, the lack of uh, visibility of female researchers and scientists, which hinders our pro progress in STEM, and uh, the need to ensure appropriate working conditions uh, for women. Um, so our proposed solution uh, involves um, a, an innovative approach and pedagogy that will allow higher education students and instructors to raise awareness on gender issues and um, invite students to take action about gender inequality in, uh, in the area of STEM by creating shareable exhibits uh, that uh, may act as mentoring models for encouraging girls and women to remain active in STEM. We have also shared with you uh, our gender sensitive uh, toolbox, uh, which uh, has step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how um, uh, students can engage in a collaborative um, uh, process and um, share uh, a solution to the FESTEM uh, challenges. So um, our effort is on engaging students as researchers, uh, as uh, practitioners, as professionals in, um, in an effort to address uh, the specific challenges using either um, uh, computational reach or uh, traditional media uh, to tackle those uh, challenges. We have also uh, had um, a short overview of uh, virtual um, reality 
demonstrating exhibits that our students have created uh, during uh, their um, um, a short implementation of uh, our toolbox. And uh, having shared uh, the examples of uh, these uh, exhibits, uh, we move on to uh, sharing the beta version of our FESTEM community network. And uh, we warmly invite you to uh, join the platform and uh, share your ideas, uh, link with uh, mentors or mentees and uh, exchange uh, ideas and support. Uh, join a circle or create a new circle uh, related to your interest. Uh, so um, we have also seen how the FESTEM community network uh, works and what it involves. And um, as I said before, we invite you to uh, build your circle of trust. So to conclude, uh, our aspiration is, is to advance the skills of higher education educators to incorporate an innovative gender sensitive approach in STEM education to empower, encourage higher education students to remain active in STEM and promote a gender sensitive teacher training educational resource in Europe. Uh, so through the gender sensitive toolkit um, uh, from the industry to uh, build a path partnership between uh, the industrial and the academic uh, environment so that uh, women that complete their studies and uh, go out to the professional environment find, have a smooth transition from academia to uh, real life uh, work environments. Uh, I think that uh, from, uh, from the um, uh, keynote talk and uh, the Roundtable discussion, uh, really inspiring ideas uh, came out, which involved um, uh, the role of education and the role of uh, role models uh, in um, encouraging women to remain active in STEM, uh, as well the role of uh, government for uh, having measures that can support uh, women in uh, their role. Uh, both as um, in uh, as professionals and as uh, in their personal life as well. So um, I would like to thank you all for uh, being here today. And if there are any other questions, we will be happy to answer. Okay, um, so thank you everyone. Uh, it was a pleasure having you here today. I think there were a lot of great ideas to take into consideration. And before we wrap up, I would like to remind you for last time to confirm your participation to the event using the link in the chat if you haven't done so. I would also like to say that in the next few days, I will send an email to the participants about the certifications of attendance. So if you would like to receive uh, the, certif the certification, please reply to the email and you will receive it shortly after. You will also receive an email with a link for a short evaluation survey of the event that will only take a few minutes and it will help us a lot for organizing our future events. So thank you very much and uh, hope you have a good night.